Yeah, I'm big on education. Uh, that's what my YouTube channel is. Um, that's that's what I'm about is education. Um, a lot of people do the uh, the good old entertainment, shoot guns fast, make it look cool, um, brass flying, and and like it's all good. But um, but I, I try to keep my my lane with in, in education and, and helping people. Uh, Cause that's what I'm about in this, this kind of community. I'm not, I'm not in it to, uh, to just entertain people, even though like my personality is pretty jazzy. So I like to, to kind of teach and joke and laugh and, and have a lot of giggles and, uh, and like every once in a while I get a really good joke. But, um, but other than that, it's, it's all about educating people and right? making them better, making them better shooters, but better thinkers, better everything. Uh, if I can, better people really. Uh, cause better people will end up as better shooters. So it's kind of cool, but yeah, that's, that's my goal, uh, with my teaching and my company. Um, but my company kinetic consulting has been around for seven years now. And, uh, I've been teaching though, since, uh, 2013. And then before that I was teaching inside the army, uh, to my own dudes. So brand new privates, uh, the, I was, I was the guy that they were like, Hey Duffy, you need, you need to take you need to take them to the range and get them kind of spooled up. So they're not retarded on the, you know, in the shoot house or they need to, they need to make sure they can run tables, which is like a qualification to be able to go into the shoot house to even do anything. Um, so because they knew I was an avid shooter and I enjoyed it and, uh, and because I was able to give my concepts to them and make it digestible enough for them to receive them and not have to yell and like, you know, just do pushups until I get tired, you know, and, and things like that. So, um, so it all stemmed from there. And I, I got a lot of gratification out of like educating those younger dudes, younger Rangers. And, and then from there, it, it all started growing even further. Uh, I worked for Frank Proctor for a while, uh, from way of the gun or now it's Frank Proctor shooting. Um, and, uh, and really took to, to life his, his attitude with it, which was kind of like, we're just, we're just having fun and shooting guns, man. You know, like we're, we're having a good time and learning things uh, more. He's, he's like an Alabama surfer. If you guys ever meet him, it's that's, that's the best way to describe him. And, uh, and he was an awesome influence on me. And then it grew to even further. Right. So I worked for uh state where I still work with Aaron Cowan from Sage Dynamics. Um, and then, uh, and then that's, that's when I started flourishing my own company into the public scene versus it being in the, in the background, uh, because I used it for law enforcement and military contracts and stuff like that. So it's been cool. It's, it's been really good. And, uh, this past year I've gotten into products. Um, once again, like things that enhance the user and help the user versus just be another cookie cutter of somebody else's fucking shenanigans. Um, so, so th that's one of the reasons I like John from Filster, like his, it, the way he innovates and he like changes the way that people do certain things that those are the kind of people I like aligning myself with or, or just spending time with in general, because those are the people that are going to make me think, and I'm going to help them think and, and really get those, those um, that, that inspiration to create more and make, make it better for everybody else. So that, that's kind of like where, where I sit with all this stuff and um, my crazy autistic mind and <laughs> how, how I solve problems is sometimes different than other people do. But um, even, even this weekend, uh, in, sorry, this week, I was up here for two days um, east of, uh, or I'm sorry, west of Charlotte, uh, teaching some law enforcement guys uh, for free, right? Like helping them out, helping them with their curriculum, helping their brand new guys out, which was cool. And then, uh, and, and it was just like, one of those things, giving back a little bit and helping them out, not, not trying to withhold all the knowledge like some dudes do and that kind of shenanigans. I'm, I'm here to teach people and help them. So that's, that's where I'm at with this kind of stuff, guys. But that's me in a nutshell. It's yes, a great it is. intro. <laughs> Cra crazy brown man. That's right. My bad. Crazy tropical brown man. For some reason, I have to specify. It's cold up here in Charlotte and it was terrible. So 30 degrees is not, doesn't sit well with me. I think it was 22 last night and I was driving around with a short sleeve shirt on. What's, what's the issue? Nope. Okay. Like I said, tropical man. I don't get this skin by sitting indoors in the heat <laughs> or outdoors in the snow.
So ultimately, what inspired you to become a professional instructor? Uh, really, it was the feelings, right? So, um, and, and I say that because like a lot of people don't talk about emotions, like big bad men are like, no, no, I don't have emotions, bro. I'm cold on the inside and stuff. And you're not, you got emotions, bro. You acting like that when you're saying that, that's an emotion, FYI. So, so I got the good feels from, um, from helping younger dudes uh, in the army. And from there, seeing light bulbs come on and seeing how they, they grew as little rangers and, and how they were like, oh, that's how you do that. You're like, yeah, man. Yeah, that's, it. that's exactly it. You know, and Matt, you're in that class where, where your buddies from, from your, your agency came and when their little light bulbs came on and you could hear them, like you could audibly hear little light bulbs going <laughs> in their heads as things were going on. And like, all you could do is just like smile. You're like, man, that feels good. Like that's, that's that, uh, that good feeling. I can't get anywhere else right now. And, um, and that's teaching, right? That's teaching in a nutshell. Most teachers will tell you, um, if they're a good teacher and they're passionate, uh, they're probably into it and they, they really love seeing students get it, whether they're elementary kids or they're adults, or you're teaching pottery, or you're teaching how to, you know, paint while people are drinking wine, whatever the heck you're doing, like, if you feel gratification and you're passionate about it, like it, it'll keep continue to inspire you every day. So that, that, that for me is what, what inspired me to start and then inspires me to continue going. And the snowball has been going for a while uh, to the point where like, I don't see the bottom of the hill, like it's still going. And, uh, and, and all my snowball just keeps growing and my intensity and passion for it just continues, which is really cool. So I, I really enjoy that. And I think every instructor should continue to have or find what inspires them to continue instructing. Because you'll see, and, and, and most of you guys have probably seen it, and, and probably some of the listen, listeners too, is like you can see when some people snowball melts and they're like, it's no longer going downhill. Maybe it, it, it hit a, uh, like a flat spot and it's like, hey man, we're kind of shrinking. And then like one day, hopefully it gets fucking kicked and it goes down and starts collecting some more snow. But, uh, but currently like they've, they've hit that spot and it's melting, man. You can see it. And it's sad to see, but at the same time, like if you're no longer passionate about something, why do it? So, um, so that, that's what I see, right. And that's, that's how I see it. So as I continue to snowball down and, and hopefully it continues, cause I really do enjoy it, but who knows, maybe, maybe, you know, years from now, I'm like, I'm a little sunburned, you know, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a break from this and go be an accountant. I, I don't know, but I doubt it because I'm not a, I'm not a fan of it, but I had to learn how to do it. So I'm a fan of being a student. Um, but, but overall, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's just, it has to be a passionate uh, thing that continues to inspire, right? Just like anything else. Uh, if, if you do it, why are you doing it? What's inspiring you to do it? Is it just money or is it, is it because you enjoy it? So for me, I, I, I enjoy getting up at 4.30 in the morning and driving two hours or driving three hours to somewhere to, to set up some sticks and some paper and then go teach people how to do things cool and then hopefully apply them into a shoot house one day and hopefully they never have to but if they ever had to apply it against humans and two-legged critters that it works out for them you know and that that there's always a little bit of luck in, involved in that one but you can do your part we had an entire modcast a few years ago just dedicated about dedicated to that plateau when people reached that whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is sad. And it's sad. You can even see it on, on Facebook when people go through this yeah. and uh, yeah. And they it's, don't even know it. No, no, no. I, I remember going to a class and, and you can see it. You can see it in the instructor's face. You can see it in the way he was acting. You see how he was kind of like out of it. And I was like, man, going through the motions. It's, it's, it is a little, his little fires burned out, dude. Um, and, uh, and at that point, like you could see it too, because they, they take really long breaks. Lunch was an hour and a half. I was like, who the hell eats lunch for an hour? I don't even eat lunch. Like, <laughs> I just keep going, man. 
but but once again like what what drives you right what does feed you you know if that makes sense too but yeah to each their own yeah there's some parallels here that we hear from pretty much every instructor which is probably a good thing just about um one thing that always sticks out is everybody always talks about how they're still a student you know even though they're a teacher so <clears throat> yeah that's, no, that's absolutely awesome. I think, uh, I think I still take around 12 to 18 classes a year. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm an avid student. Uh, this year I couldn't go to symposium as a student, uh, full, full time. Cause they, cause Shockey wanted me to do it as a, uh, as an instructor and even on my off time as an instructor, cause I was teaching some night classes, some day, daytime classes. I went to the opposing classes, like, <laughs> Because that was kind of like a perk. Like, I just get to walk over to whoever's class and be like, yo, what's up, dude? And uh, I'm going to come learn some stuff. And uh, and I think that, one, that was a benefit to me. I, I enjoyed the shit out of that. But being a student and seeing other perspectives shows you not only, like, cool new things, right, or potentially new ways of teaching certain things, but it, it forces you to be in that atmosphere as a student, which then makes it teaching, like, Oh, you know what? I remember that one time I didn't understand this fucking bullshit. Check it out. This is what it's like, you know, and, and you can really help them apply it and, and put it in context for a specific student because they're having a hard time understanding it um, by using things that are similar to them. Cause that's how we, we correlate things. If you're trying to learn something, if you, if you try to find the differences in what you're used to versus what you're learning, it's going to be way harder than if you go ahead and you correlate it to things you're sim that are similar so for example, martial artist, that's easy, dude, check it out. This is how we do this body, right? Footwork, all the different things that get involved in martial arts in some form or fashion carry over to the firearms world really easy, or you can correlate the same kind of, uh, what you call it subjects. So you can, you can correlate those things. If I, I figured out some dude was a, uh, a farrier, right? So uh, that, that was his job. Right. And a farrier isn't just a dude that runs around with wings on and glitter. Right. That's what I thought when he said it. And I was like, that's a weird job. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's a dude that puts horseshoes on and, and, and makes them and shit. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. They probably should have called you a horseshoer. Like I, I didn't understand that at first. <laughs> and, um, and so uh, as, as he kind of explained that, I was like, I was like, well, check it out, right? And then I started correlating the subject that we were talking about with what he did by just using small snippets of understanding that I can, I can correlate between the two just by putting together like, hey man, the focus you put in on putting a shoe on a horse, right? you kind of have to focus on that. You could hurt the horse or permanently injure the horse to the point that they can't walk if you do it incorrectly, right? That focus is what I want you focusing on with your trigger, right? Like, Put that focus into there because now guess what? You put those shoes on, you're like, ching, 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 whatever. And then it's done. And it, you didn't even have to think about it. Why? Because you're, you're subconsciously competent at, at putting on a horseshoe. And <laughs> the same thing can happen to your trigger if you put that effort into it the same way. So it was cool to see them, uh, him like, boom, light bulb, right? Love hearing it. Love seeing it flash. It's really bright at night. So you guys got to keep that shit down sometimes. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but, but overall it's, it's really cool to see that and, and that correlation just from small snippets of understanding. Right. And if I had to, I could go Google, like what the hell do farriers do, you know, and like, and like see a video or something, help me out understanding it so I can better explain certain subjects, um, things like that. So correlating similarities, I think that's one of those things, but as a student, I get to understand those things a little bit easier than some guy that doesn't take classes anymore. He only drinks his Kool-Aid and, and he sits back and he's like, all right, guys, so you're going to have to uh, just do that thing, you know, with the gun at the paper and make the cool little whole things. And like, you're like, man, I feel like there's a little bit more you're withholding on that, that whole subject there. <laughs> so things like that. That's, that's how I see it, at least. Crazy, crazy John stuff. No, that's great. So going along with that same kind of a subject and you, you use the word inspired, who inspires you and who are or were your role models? Yeah, so that's easy one, right? So uh, at first uh, I had a, a really good team leader 
who, who was one of the guys that kind of started teaching me how to use night vision, right? When I first got to Ranger Battalion, that was, that was a huge thing. Cause that's what we use for almost everything, right? Like, all right, we're going to go out and go hunt people. Cool. <laughs> you know, you had to put them on. Uh, so we had to understand them. And he was the only one that kind of explained what the buttons did, how to focus them. And I was like, wow, there's a lot to this. It's not just like, eh, I can see in the dark. It was like, <laughs> there, there's a little bit more to it. And, um, and made me practice. We went for walks, you know, and like, I like just went, went out for a walk and just go tripping over bushes and twigs and plants and whatever. And, um, and really experienced that. And, and he was explaining to me, he's like, he's like, listen, man, right now I'm not your sergeant. I'm, I'm just another dude. And I want you to like relax and, and come learn. So he inspired me to like really take that to heart. And so when I got privates, I was like, all right, cool. Like, let's uh, guys, let's, let's chill out. Right. Take that military shit and go put it in a box for a few. Right. If somebody important comes by, pull that shit out really quick, but otherwise let's keep it in a box. I'm just Duffy and let's, let's just chit chat, right? Let's talk like humans. Let's act like humans and let's learn things. Ask me questions like normal people. And it really set the environment for that. So, um, so that was like the first inspiration I had and, and mentorship, I guess you could say, or, or role model per se, because that's what I rolled to my, my guys. Um, but the other side of that was like when the, the civilian world or me going out and learning how to shoot better was, uh, was Frank Proctor. He was a huge influence on me. And, uh, and some people have come to my classes and been like, man, that's kind of a little proctory right there. And it's the things I say, or the way I say them, or, um, just the excitement I have on certain subjects when I'm teaching them. Uh, but really like it's, he was a huge role model. Um, I mean, I, I used to like sleep on his couch and shoot with him on the weekends and guns got hot enough, like throw them in a cooler you know, because they had to cool off while we we're loading mags and thumbs hurt and all sorts of stuff. Like we just jam through mags all the time, but he was a good role model. Aaron uh, Cowan, awesome role model for me. Um, most people like look at him and they see his resting bitch face and they're like, wow, he seems like he's upset all the time. He is probably one of the funniest chill dudes you'll ever meet. Um, just likes to hang out. It's just, that's, that's just his face, man. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so he was a huge role model, told me a lot of really important things about instructing and teaching. Um, one of them being that everything that you teach, you know, in, in one way or another could possibly get somebody killed or can save somebody's life, you know, in, in more elegant words, but that's the way I like to put it now. But he's, you know, he, he inspired that, that thought process, like, all right, John, like whatever your curriculum is, Make sure that shit's fucking airtight and works and isn't some fucking fairy dust from some other fucking place or land and make sure it's applicable because somebody's going to go out there and use it and potentially kill themselves, right? Like get themselves in some bad situation and they're like, all right, he said to shoot with his pinky. All right, this isn't working right now, you know, and like, and like, bro, why, who told you that? So that's one of the big things is everything that I try to teach is it's huge, right? It's, it's big on the side of it's probably going to save your life, but it could potentially get you killed. So it has to be fantastically easy to understand and digestible to the point that you can go out and practice it. Um, but yeah, that, those are, those are three good role models that I had that, and, and I continue to get more and more mentors and some of them are businessy. Some of them are more on the side of teaching. Some of them are just like, man, I like your fucking thought process, dude. So it, they, they come in all shapes and sizes. Not all mentors are going to be like, come under my wing and I'll show you the way, you know, and like, you know, not, not everybody's going to take you that way. You know, not everybody's going to Yoda you, but some may just inspire you or, or guide you in, in a way like, Hey man, I just, I, I like the way your thought process is. I want to just chit chat more so I can understand it. And then hope to emulate that one way or another in my own flavor. Um, because that's what you do, right? As, as kind of a teacher, you, you learn certain things and you're like, man, I got this vanilla, the strawberry and some chocolate from this one, these different people. And I blend them all together and make my own milkshake out of it. You know, it's, it's my own flavor. So it's, it's interesting, but I mean, that's, that's how role models are. I don't think it's like one specific person or, or has to be like very in depth. 
It could just be like once upon a time, that was cool. I like that dude, you know, and that, that inspired me. Um, a good, Oh, a good example, right? Rob Trevino. Uh, most people don't know who that is unless you're like in the law enforcement military uh, side of things. Really good, uh, like a uh, Delta dude that left and started a business and he started training stuff, but he mainly did lectures on leadership. And one of the things he says in one of his lectures and one of his main things is doing the, the hard right over the easy wrong. That right there was super inspirational for me. I was like, son of a B dude, you're absolutely right. Like it, it is so much harder to do the right thing. And like, it takes more effort. It takes more energy. It takes whatever, but it is way more gratifying versus the opposite, which is doing the easy wrong, which everybody knows, you know, humans are inherently lazy. So we always are like, well, <laughs> I'm just not going to go because I'm tired, but you're not, you're just being lazy, man. So, so doing the hard right over the easy wrong was a big one, but I met that guy once and I was like, damn it. He inspired me for a while or, or that was a really good inspirational quote that sticks with me now, even. So that kind of stuff. Well, here you are bringing it up. How much, how much time has passed since you heard it? Like my first or second year in college yeah. is when I went to his leadership thing. Cause the DEA guys like invited me and I was like, all right, yeah, I could skip class. <laughs> so, so I did. <laughs> and it still influences you because you just brought it up here. Worth it. Yeah. Worth it. Absolutely. Yeah, no, for sure. Let's see. What was the other one that you guys want to talk about? Oh, I just, I wanted to see if, if the uh, peanut gallery had something, but they don't. So, well, talk to me guys. Uh, oh, there we go. Real quick. I, I actually really like that statement. Do the hard right over the easy wrong. I mean, you could apply that to just about anything in life, but Literally. the thing that immediately popped into my mind was uh, working out specifically weightlifting. I mean, <laughs> it's big there, you know, so <clears throat> proper, just proper form when you're working out sometimes makes it harder, but it's much more Dude. gratifying in the end than just being sloppy. It, about it, it, so. it applies to everything. Yep. It's yeah, a difference between much. getting up at five 30 in the morning when your alarm goes off or hitting snooze 15 times until it's six, you know, and like, well, I know this is going to be hard, but I don't want to do it. <laughs> you know, and, or, or mm, it's five 30. All right, let's go splash some water on my face so I can get up for the day. So it, 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 it could apply to literally everything in your life. Now, should I buy that one scope or should I actually save for another scope that's better? <laughs> like, like even anything that simple, uh, drink water over soda and shit like that. So, you know, like anything, it's, it doesn't taste that good, but it's way better than, than soda for your body. You got to get so, the, the sparkling water that's flavored. No sugar. <laughs> it's, there's nothing in here. I feel like there's a mystery there. as to how it tastes <laughs> like anything when there's nothing in it, but it's just, it, there's, there's bubbles and cancer. It's no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll find and out one better day. than water. Be something in here. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I know my body likes water better. It tells me that later. I think my favorite description of that kind of uh, water, that bubbly flavored water is the, the flavor is, it's similar to as if you're you're drinking it and someone yells strawberry from the other room. <laughs> that is yeah, exactly that's that's a, that's it. actually about accurate. Nice, because because it's not even real. Like this isn't full of strawberries. You know what you could do is actually cut up some strawberries and throw them in your water. Yep, that's always a great idea. It says natural flavor, but. <laughs> lab grown is natural i guess yeah that that was their hard or, or their hard right right or like mm -hmm. <laughs> to put that <laughs> hard right over the easy wrong that's right you could just use normal water and ask your wife every like 10 minutes just like strawberry from the <laughs> other room it's the same it is if she just toss one at your head from across the room every once in a while <laughs> you might get it out of that yeah, yeah. <laughs> babe there's there's a lot of red marks on my face. I'm not liking this. <laughs> I think we should try a different drink. Hey, Water, the watermelon. Over. The dad jokes have taken. So the next question, what do you consider to be your specialty and how are you different from other instructors? 
All right, specialty. Let's see. Other than my artistic shenanigans, all right. Um, one one of my one of the things that I think I do way different is is throw in a lot of doodles, right? Like I draw a ton of stuff. Um, I see some instructors do that, right? They they draw or dip, depict certain things, but I do a lot of it, right? You know, like I draw this, I draw like how the dot wobbles, I, do, I draw all sorts of craziness. And like when people see the targets on the internet, when people put them up, they're like, what is that? And um, and even my equation, right? Like that, that equation you've seen, Matt, my equation on shooting, like people look at that and they're like, yeah, I'm not sure what he's trying to say right there. <laughs> But if you were in the class, you'd understand, you know, and um, so so I think that's one of the things I do differently. Um, but a, a specialty, I think it's just like the way I teach. Right. Because because what I'm teaching, everybody like can teach to an extent, handgun, rifle, you know, uh, in, in individual skills, like inside of a building uh, in, in any kind of way, like night vision wise. Not everybody can teach that, but there are a lot of good dudes teaching it, like a lot of dudes that I teach with a lot. Um, but really I, I think it's just the way I teach. I think that's because that's so different is, uh, it, it captivates the, the most novice shooter all the way to the grandmaster. That's like, son of a bitch. I never thought of that dude, you know, and he may be getting a, a smidge out of classes on certain occasions, but that's what you're learning at those levels. You're going incrementally higher versus the newer shooter that's skyrocketing with an overloaded mind. Um, and your, your, your operating memory is, is just packed. So like things like that, like I, I do, I do cater to so many different levels of dudes, um, and do debts. Uh, actually I, I have a lot of fun teaching women how to shoot better. I, it's super fun. And because mainly they listen so much fucking better. Um, they, they just, they're like, you know what, Roger that John apply. And they just do it really good. And you're like, hell yeah, girl. You know, high five. Uh, I, I recently had a, uh, a law enforcement chick. She was like, she was like, John, I suck at shooting. I don't know if I'm going to pass qual. I'm like, well, check it out. Let's fix that. So we go out to the range and she was like, oh my gosh, that's how easy it is. I'm like, it's literally that easy. It's just, you have to put it into terms for yourself and then just apply it. So it, it was really cool. Like she was overthinking things in certain ways, but and that's what a lot of us do in general. People do it, they overthink certain stuff, but it just takes some teacher, right. To, to guide you, coach you a little bit and, and force you to understand the subject enough so that you're like, Hmm, that makes sense to my brain. Cause we all learn differently. You know, and, and when I teach, I try to teach in, in multiple avenues where you guys get it, you know, with, with your vision, right. And a visual learners get, get it. Physical learners get it. And, and, listeners actually get it you know like all the different learning modalities that are out there and not just for adults but for kids too um if you can't conquer that and keep their attention for very long you're not going to keep them so i think that's that's where where my specialty lies is is pulling people in and being able to like let them have information and be able to digest it versus Bro, just went in one of my ears and I lost it because it came out the other one because I wasn't listening so good. Or so it's like, all right, I can make you listen gooder. So it, it helps. That that's where I think I, I specialize. I don't think it's a specific subject, though. I think having attended a few classes with you and attended classes with others, mm -hmm. um, you provide a relaxed atmosphere. And when I say relaxed, I don't mean unsafe. I don't mean lazy. I mean, it's comfortable and it's comfortable where people can express themselves, bring up questions and be real about what their, what their performance is and real about it, what expectations are. Yeah. And, and they start to slowly realize they're only competing against themselves. Right. Like in that class, like most of the time people aren't like, man, the guy next to me is shooting so much faster. Like, Cause there is no shooting faster. Like <laughs> you're not, you're, you're, you're learning and, and you're, you're dissecting what you're doing for so often in the class that you're like, you're so focused on what you're doing. It's really cool. Like uh, I had, I had a guy in my recent class, like this weekend and, um, and it was a handgun class. Dude has been on, you know, a SWAT team for 25 years. 
right? He's been doing work for, for 20 something years, been shooting for even longer. And um, he was like, John, like, I wish I met you like my first year on the job. It would have made my 25 years that much easier. And I could have, I could have influenced so many other law enforcement um, officers and deputies and all sorts of stuff that he had under him uh, because he, he just, he knew like, holy shit, I wish, I wish I knew this back then. And, uh, and it's cool because he had one of his guys that was literally on the, his first year of the job and he forced him to go. And, <laughs> and this guy was like, holy shit overloaded. But at the same time, he was like, he had, I don't know, six or seven pages of notes in a shooting class. So it was, it was cool to see and, and a lot of guys uh, and, and take that to heart, hopefully. But, uh, but one of the things that uh, I tried to do too is like teach people how to be students in classes. You know, that, that's one of my video series on, on my YouTube channel is like how to be a student because that, that's something a lot of people don't know how to do. And me as a professional teacher has, have been a professional student for just this long. It's, it's really cool to go and help, help people out with that you know, traveling with firearms. People don't think about that and then they have to and they're like, shit, look at all the rules. Well, I made a video on that stuff, you know, like trying to educate people on doing it so it makes it easier for them to travel and go do those things. Um, and, I, and I did that, that series on a class that I'd never taken before and some subject that was new to me. So it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I'm probably going to extend it. I'm going to learn archery soon. Yeah. Archery is pretty fun. Yeah, I just want to shoot things. So yeah, it'd be a cool way of shooting things. It's fun. Like my neighbors, maybe my neighbor's cat. I'm like, I don't know. No, just kidding. <laughs> That's terrible. But if in case it happens. Um, just a quick question about your drawing and your doodling in class. So mm -hmm. would you say that you do that more for visual learners or because you find it to be an easier way to explain things or is it kind of a mixture of both? It's both it sounds sure. like a mixture of both really from what you said. Yeah, definitely. It, it, it helps out a lot of guys, right? Because, yeah. um, cause if I explain something to you, like a good example is that snowball effect that I was talking about earlier. You know, I, I tried to depict it with words. I also started using my hands to show you guys what I was talking about. And, and that right there started correlating more and more with, with all three of you. So, I didn't have to like give you details. It's like the snowball was cold and there's frost coming on. Like I didn't have to say any of that shit, but you guys understood what I was, what the concept was based off of that stupid little hand gesture and the little plateau. And then it started to melt and like, <laughs> like that alone, like that, that's the kind of stuff I, I want to do to help people understand things. So that, that as simple as that, the, the concepts, even just talking about sites or talking about the trigger um, or talking about any, any other facet to grip and stuff. Like if I could draw it and give you like a visual representation in a way that you've never seen it before, it may click. And then your little neurons are fucking blasting and they're like, damn, John. And those things are what light up the light bulb that sits on top of your head. Like it's gotta be electricity. Right. So, so that, that's, that's what it is. So, um, so it's cool. Like it's, I like doing it because it does help a lot of people understand certain concepts. I'm just disappointed that you don't have a whiteboard right now. Right. <laughs> I use his targets you, typically. Yeah. You call up uh, Hilton, let them know that they're, they're Hampton Inns. Need I'll tell them that. Yeah. I'll tell them that. <laughs> I have this one guy. He just needs it. So I don't know what room he's going to be in ever or what country or state he's going to be in. <laughs> or what hotel. Or anything, put them but in they all. better be there. Yeah. They better be there. Dear Mr. Hampton Inn. <laughs> So I think we're going to touch on this. We will touch on this later, but it, the question came to my mind now. So yeah. Um, does your YouTube channel, did, did your YouTube channel come before you started teaching or did you start teaching and you wanted to, um, you know, kind of create this online space where you could um, continue educating your students or are there, are there videos that you've created that um, are mandatory viewing before your classes, things like that? So, so my YouTube channel started after I started teaching. And it was when I realized that there's more that I can share, um, that in most classes, I'm not going to sit there and talk about traveling with firearms. You know, I'm not going to teach them how to be a student in a class that they're a student 
um, unless it's applicable in that moment. Like, hey, guys, like, how about we grab some notebooks because you're going to need them, you know, things like that. And, and like, hey, guys, take notes like this oh, or I can depict it in a video and hopefully students you know, they gravitate towards my YouTube channel, learn before they come to class. Or if they're vetting their instructors properly, they should be looking at all the avenues that they communicate in. And that would be one of them. Uh, that they can get more information about the instructor, kind of feel them out a little bit, and then also learn from them at the same time, um, which for me is huge. So, and I know we're, we're going we're gonna to talk about that as well, but um, but it definitely came afterwards. It was, it was one of those uh, continued education or education in a different way. Um, and then also it's, it's another way of it's technically marketing, right? Because people may come across it and be like, who the hell is a stupid brown guy that drove that, you know, that space fighter in Rogue One? Why is he on YouTube? <laughs> so, so, uh, so either way, it, it, it comes in handy in those ways. But um, mainly, it's also another way that people can share information. Because, like, as you you probably know, um, when when somebody values that information that they just saw, listened to, whatever, they're like, oh man, this was awesome. Billy needs this, and like. <laughs> share to Billy and Billy's like, Oh dude, guess who else needs this? And then, and then whoever else gets it and then it starts to get passed around. And that's our version of our social media's version of, uh, of word of mouth. So it, it continues to educate people even, even past the ability of me just sharing it away. So it's, it's really cool. I, I like it. It's, it's a great Avenue and, and I'll try and keep going. Uh, I try to do a video a week um, or at least uh, have a video ready for everybody a week but sometimes my schedule gets a little busy and I kind of have to skip or, or whatever, but yeah. Or I'll do them from the hotel room. Those are always weird. You guys like my lighting? <laughs> awesome. It's like a studio. Too busy to do the YouTube videos because some idiots keep bothering you for an interview over and over and over. Nah, like uh, one, of the, one of the things I do videos on a lot is people ask me questions about something. You know, some, some guy asked me um, about like, uh, what was it? The, the core ice vents. And I was like, dude, I love those things. They're super cool. Like it's great, innovative product. Once again, I like, I like innovation, man. Um, and, uh, and he was just curious how they worked and what they did. And I was like, all right, I could do a video on that. You know, and th th those are the easiest ones for me to like do, because I don't have to think of the idea, <laughs> which sometimes is the hardest part. Um, and, and I've thought of like just starting a video and be like, all right, guys. So I wanted to talk about today is water, you know, and like, and like, and just talk about something really stupid and see how that went. But I haven't done it yet. I haven't run out of things yet. <laughs> Sounds like a really interesting video. I think that we already gave you kind of the outline for it. You talk about bubbles and cancer and. Yeah. Strawberries from across the room. Something, something do the, the, the hard right over the easy wrong. Keep digging that one in. <laughs> be a really good video. <laughs> now she's like, "Come on, just all just the presentation." I just, I just want to see it, just once, please. <laughs> so, at what point did you find your ability was good enough to teach it? So, shooting wise, um, I guess like I think it was around 2013 or 14, something like that, where I was competing really often. I was shooting really well. Um, I also um, because I was, was, I'm a weird shooter. Cause I, I started out tactical world and defensive world and then learned the competition world and then started smushing them the fuck together. And like, as much as they didn't want to go together, like two opposing magnets or whatever, like they were like, no bro. And I was like, fuck you. We're going to go and hang out together. And I forced them to, uh, to collide. Um, I, I present things in a different way for a lot of dudes. So that, that mixture and, and also just seeing how I perform in, in certain classes, you know, a good example is like still nobody's gotten as many black patches in, in Aaron's classes as I have. Um, I don't know why they're wasting the time to get more, like, come on, I, I can't even get them anymore. Now I give them out. So like things like that, like it, it was, it was shown to me by a lot of instructors uh, when I was in their classes that when I spoke, they were like, no, 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 keep going, dude. Like you're on to something. And then they were like, you know, and, and I always try to like say, I'm sorry if I spoke up out of turn or like, Hey man, I didn't, I didn't want to steal your class from you or anything like that. He's like, 
It's like, no, dude, when you start talking, I was like, I'm listening. Like <laughs> I was learning. So it was cool. Like, and, and at that point it, it dawned on me, like, man, I can, I can share what I know and hopefully help others because I think of it differently. Right. And I also look at it as, as like a forever student kind of thing, where because I'm a student, it makes it easier for me to depict information as well. Um, and then, and then also just like my personality is a little weird and, you know, like I, I, I like having fun. I like laughing, joking. I like making jokes about certain things that are actually serious. Like you shouldn't joke about death, but for some reason it's kind of still a little funny. So you like make jokes about it and then like things like that, like, and, and even shooting in general, like it's a serious subject. doesn't mean we have to act serious all the time. Um, so, so it, it's cool. Like to see that even in, in like a shootout, Oh, I just, I lost audio for just a few seconds there. Did anyone else? Okay, we're good. Yeah, it was just you, man. Yeah. Fix your stuff. Stop rolling over your cord. Right. (laughs) Because it acts like a fire hose. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But yeah, that that, that kind of stuff, uh, I think it drew me in to the point that I was like, all right, I could teach people because people are already asking for more of what I want or what I, what I offer. And, uh, and, and that was really cool. And that, and then the expertise stuff, right? Like little things that I'm, I, I am considered an expert at. Uh, so the night vision world, things like that, where like, hey, John knows how to explain the night vision things a little easier and understandable for, for especially the cop man and swap man. So it makes it simpler for them to understand those subjects if somebody can depict them that way. Uh, but yeah, uh, putting things into context. What's your secret to creating lesson plans? Oh, this is a good one. So <laughs> check it out. I take how I want to learn something. Then I put that aside for a second. Then I take how human beings in general learn, right? Like how, how do we receive information? How do we process information? How do we output the information? And then I smush them slightly together and I reorganize them a little bit and make it more digestible because, you know, our brain can only learn a certain subject at a time. And then as it digests it, um, I can go ahead and stack that skill or that, that I guess you, you have skill. We can put that skill on top of the next thing that we want to learn. And then we, we take those two or we continue dragging them along and then we stack those on top of a third skill. So I teach in a skill stacking method and it's a, it's a way of teaching uh, one adults because adults are inherently they're like I know this already, <laughs> especially dudes, <laughs> and especially around guns. Um, but uh, but when you start teaching in that way, you're not like degrading them in some form or fashion. You know, like I've been up there where where an instructor's like, "All right, all of you guys are idiots. I'm going to teach you how to be right." And you're like, that already tastes fucking funny, bro. Like. I don't like being called an idiot because I know I'm not. And, uh, and, and from there, it, it kind of, it, it usually puts the wrong taste on a class, but, but if you don't take it that way and you're like, all right, let's, let's learn things. Right. And let's, let's go from these little subjects and keep stacking them on top of each other. And Matt, you've seen it where we get to the end of skill stacking and you've got all these blocks of different skills that you're teeter tottering on top of moving and shooting and like transitions and stuff like that. And, uh, and my curriculum is built upon doing a skill stacking method. Now, the other side of it, right? Because that's the way we learn. That's the subjects I want to teach because that's the way that I would want to learn it. But then we have to look at like, there's a bunch of different kinds of people. So I actually have a base curriculum that branches in like four or five different ways, depending on the type of class, based on the type of student that I'm getting. So let's say like, okay, this guy's having really bad time with his grip, right? But we've, we've already passed grip, but he's still having trouble with it. There's a section to my curriculum that'll branch off that goes a little bit more in depth to help him out based off of the problems he's having, because I've built out this kind of like, I don't know, it's a, not a flow chart, but it seems that way, but in, in bullet points, not really in a flow chart method, but 
that's the way I like to teach. And, and if I have trouble with something, I can go back and reference it and be like, all right, so he may be this, 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 or this that's ailing him, right? Most of the time, it's just his hand strength, right? Or it's the grip size to hand size, you know, relationship, because not every grip's made for all of our freaking hands, you know? And, and, and you've seen it, Matt, where I have all of you guys put your hands out and be like, all right, put your hands out, look at your hands. All right, look at your neighbor's hands. Are they the same? No, because <laughs> they're not going to be the same, right? Everybody's fucking hands are different. So like what works for me, what works for Matt, what works for Evan, what works for Tesha doesn't fucking work for everybody else. You know, you guys are all your individual little snowflakes. So because of that, we have to kind of play around with different techniques. And, and that's how the curriculum kind of goes. It's very open-minded if you want to call it that too, because I can rearrange it midday if I wanted to, because I think something is more important than another thing, or I throw in some funky shit because I'm guinea pigging it in that class. So most students don't even know, but in, in the majority of classes, one little subject in there, maybe me just trying it out that day to see if that sticks to their brains a little better. Um, because one, I may have learned it, or I may have thought it because I don't sleep a lot. So I stay up at night staring at the ceiling and thinking about things and, or, or three, it may have been like just a, a thing that I said in a class. And I was like, man, that was gold. Write that shit down. Right. And I'm, I'm going to go and try it in the next one. See if that also helps that class or those students. And then, uh, and then demographics, right. Demographics are always a huge thing. Um, like, like teaching an all women's class, I teach it relatively the same as I teach like an all dudes class or, or a regular open enrollment class. The only difference is I emphasize their grip stuff because just grip stuff for, for smaller hands in general is always a little bit more difficult. So there's different things that I can help them with because their hands are just a tidbit smaller. Right. So, um, and not that every woman's hand is smaller because there's some women that come into class and they got these ginormous mitts and they just manhandle guns. I'm like, get it girl. Right. And then the small ones, they, once they start figuring out what works for them, I love seeing their recoil management just rocking. You're like, yeah, like, like they, there's no limitations. If you, if you just keep your mind open and try out the different little things that you can. So, and, and discovery mode. Right. <laughs> so, uh, but that's, that's the way I kind of build curriculum and then apply the curriculum to the different types of students that I get. Um, and, and with cop classes, you'll be surprised, but cop classes, I go a little bit more um, fundamental than I do in like an open enrollment class sometimes because uh, they, they tend to need more fundamental training on the basics of firearms and shooting versus an open enrollment class of dudes that are like, I love shooting, man. I shoot every week or I shoot on my own time or I pay to go shooting myself where you have like a law enforcement in, in, uh, in service class. And those motherfuckers get like eight hours a year, right? If that to like work on fundamentals or anything, if they don't do it on their own time. So they need more help with that. So that's the kind of thing too, is like all the curriculums tailored towards the clients. Um, just like any other product that's out there or service, it's always tailored towards the clients, but with my own autistic flavor on it. You just said something that reminded me of something that I really, really appreciated and enjoyed in your class discovery mode. Tell us more about that and how do you <laughs> implement it and when do you implement it? All right. So in class, right, let's say we learn a subject, whatever the subject is, grip, sights, trigger, freaking transitions, uh, anything really. But mainly it comes with all the fundamental stuff. So grip, sights, and trigger. When we learn those, right, we go through them, we go through them in depth, right? We're very into the weeds with it, with a bunch of options, the reason I do that is because right afterwards, I allow you guys a little bit of time to mess around with them. Discovery mode is that time. And discovery mode is where I'm like, all right, guys, so line's hot. I want you to mess with your grip. Mess it up intentionally. Go to something that's uncomfortable. Go to try your thumb stuff. Try different pressures. Try different techniques that we talked about. And apply those in different ways and see how they apply in your sighting system and give you like what, what they're telling you. Because your sighting system's gonna tell you if you've got good hits, if you have good recoil management, if you've got good grip, if you've got good, good everything, your sighting system's your diagnostic tool forever, 
So those of you that, that think like you have to work on recall management, really you just have to work on grip because grip in the package, when you buy grip, like when you buy that shit at Walmart, it comes with recoil management, batteries fucking included. So, so with that, right, I let them kind of experience these things and give them time to go through a mag, maybe two, and really play around with it because how else are you supposed to apply the things you just learned about um, with a standardized drill or something like that? I, I just let you go, right? Like release the hounds and, and, and shoot at your own pace, uh, giving yourself recoil, seeing what it looks like, and, uh, and to me, that, that was a huge thing, like, like just applying the skill and trying it out and trying it wrong too. like, like, why not see what it looks like incorrect as well as it looks like correct. Um, as some would say that, oh, that's going to cause a drink scar. And I would argue that no, it actually is just information, right? It's just like anything else. You look at facts, like those facts didn't skew like the other facts, you know, like it's just, it's, it's just information. So, so well, if anything, it's, utilize it. it, it's reinforcing, it's reinforcing the right. good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, how do you enjoy a, a sunny day if you've never seen a rainy one? Well, the other thing that I appreciate about that specifically is I can't tell you how many classes I've gone to where the instructor teaches this and that, and then you shoot whatever drills they have planned to, you know, to work on improving things. But then I get out of the class and I just think to myself, man, I can't just wait to go shoot on my own now so that I can actually compare, uh, you know, apply these things on my own time without mm -hmm. being forced into, well, regulated, I guess is probably a good way to put it of, okay, I'd really like to just try this new grip for five minutes or 10 minutes, but we have to keep going with the class. So, <clears throat> and then, um, I think you're because the first person. they don't give a lunch break. Yeah. I Cut think that you're shit the... out so you can do that. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. Who needs food? Um, Just eat it while you load mags. I can thing... chew and load mags. Totally possible. That's some good multitasking right there. Yeah. yeah they're both subconscious that. competent skills at certain point, so <laughs> I'm not even multitasking. Um, I think you're the first person that we've talked to so far where, so there's been a couple people that have said, I don't have lesson plans. <laughs> which is interesting. And then there's some people that have said, yeah, I have lesson plans and I stick to them, which is also interesting. But I like your take on it because you have a lesson plan. Um, and I was actually going to ask you what you do when it comes to skill stacking in classes. If you have a student where, you know, let's say you already went over grip and they're struggling with grip. I think it's really cool how you have the... I, we'll just call it the flow chart, the flow chart mm -hmm. method where you can sort of tailor your classes depending on what, what some of the students or one of the students might be struggling with. Because I do see that a lot where you're at a class and the instructor says, you know, we're going over grip. And then later in the day, you still see him talking to a couple students and he's still talking about grip, even though we're mm -hmm. kind of past that. And it's kind of just like, a, eh, yeah, don't forget that you're supposed to be doing that too. So yeah, that's a, that's a really cool method for lesson planning well, and execution. Not, not just that, but like, let's say like uh, a student's still having trouble with grip later on in the day, right? It's, it's hard to be like, you know, hey, make sure you do this thing because that thing may not be the thing that works for their hands and their gun. Right. So they, they need to figure out what it is. And if you don't give them time to figure out what their grip needs to be, like, like what is your optimal grip, then how the fuck are they supposed to figure it out and use it and learn with it throughout the day? Um, now it is hard, right? If you think about it, like you learn a new subject and then you apply and you're like, son of a B, that's how I do it. And then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I figured it out but now we're starting to learn another thing. And that's the hard part about classes. And it's not to say like, oh, you have to go to a class prepared and all like you, you do, but you also, you need to start taking notes, right? Like people just don't take notes enough. Um, and even if they record or, or they just, they jot it down really quick uh, just to, to at least solidify like what worked for them. So if like, if I was writing notes on like grip stuff, all right, we talked about grip. All right, John gave us all these options. 
And then the options that worked for me and that were optimal were these. Cool. So then later when I'm chewing on food, loading mags, I could be reading that and being like, all right, I got to keep that optimal grip as I work through this thing because I need to go back over there and work on sites now. And when I'm working on sites, I got to be using this optimal grip. So it's like a lot of steps. So I try to, I, I actually start implementing like a shooter's checklist. And, and it's every time I go up to the, to this, to the, uh, the target to help students kind of reorient themselves to each and every one of the subjects is to think of it like, okay, one, got to have grip, right? Got to get the gun out. I got to hold the gun properly the way I want to. So if I have to take a couple more seconds to figure it out and put it back to where it was, where it was optimal, I'll do it, right? Do that. Then I got to find my sites. Cool. What was the optimal way of finding my sites and utilizing sites? And then what was the optimal way of using my trigger, right? So grip sites and trigger. Those are, those are the three you got to worry about. Those are the ones that ail the, the majority of us anyways, to, to the point of even myself, where sometimes trigger gets away from me or my grip gets loosened up a little bit because I'm like, ah, I'm being lazy, right? Because it was, it was the easy wrong at that moment, right? And then, and then at a certain point, like you, you start seeing those things and the sighting system tells you which one you're deficient on. And then you go ahead and reinforce that one as you're going. So you can fix all of this in real time versus people shoot 17 rounds, reload, and then they holster. And then they're like, why does my target look like that? It's like, bro, that shit happened 17 rounds ago in the past. That's all historic data. But now you're trying to like correlate what the hell you were doing to those, those holes in the piece of paper. And those may be mixed up with other holes from previous drills. Like what happened was literally in your sighting system at that moment. Use that in that moment, right? Oh shit. Okay. Seeing dot, seeing the dot, seeing that. Oh shit. I didn't see the dot that time or the dot check marked really funny. What do you think happened? Right. Jammed on that trigger. Maybe my grip was loose, whatever the hell it was at the time. And we go through all those diagnostic things, which is really cool. Um, but then they can self-diagnose as you go and it slowly builds you as a better and better shooter because every time you shoot, you're seeing those diagnostics and you're correcting yourself as you go. So it's like, it's, it's a revolving circle of shooting and shooting better each time, which is kind of cool. So that, that's, that's one of the big parts of my curriculum to start forcing that. Cause my goal as a teacher is to make it so that my students don't need me anymore. Right. They could be like, all right, cool. That was an awesome class. And if they ever come back, that's cool. If they don't, hopefully they take all that shit and they make themselves better. You know, and, and that's my goal as a teacher. I don't expect them to come back, but if they do, like I said, I'm, I'm super awesome. I love seeing more people. I love seeing them come back for a second time because they receive different kinds of information or like a student once said, he was like, you know, the first time I came to this class, I wasn't ready to hear what you were saying, right. On this specific subject, but two classes later, I was fucking there. And when you said it, I was like, son of a bitch, my brain, it, it like, Things clicked into place. The little minions in there were like, hey, we're going to pull this lever because this will explain what he was saying just now. <laughs> and you heard it twice before, but you were like, ah, oh, I wasn't ready for that. You know, and, and at that point, that guy was ready for that, which was cool. So that's the good part about going to repetitive classes or going to a class that's similar than to another one, because you'll receive the information differently because you've, you've kind of liked watching movies multiple times. You're like, Oh, that happened? Huh, I must have been texting. Or <laughs> that happened? Where the hell was I the last time I watched this? <laughs> you know, so so you just receive information differently each time, which is cool. Um, that and I change classes a lot. I, I tweak them constantly, like like I talked about in my curriculum. So, in your opinion, what are important things for instructors beyond curriculum? Attitude girl. <laughs> I think, I think attitude is one of the biggest things. And I'm not talking like, like you have to be like a, you know, strong, independent black woman kind of attitude. Uh, but you do have to have like a good attitude about things because people are going to piss you off, man. Like there are some guys that are super hard to teach. There are some dudes that are stubborn as fuck. There are some dudes that are just too alpha male for themselves. And that's cool, man. But it's how you handle those is, is how or what 
you as an instructor, one, portray to your other students because they're watching that interaction. <laughs> don't think they don't. But also like, you know, like if, if, you're, if you're looking at that um, and, and you get frustrated, uh, everybody here has seen a human being frustrated, right? Nobody's, nobody's like, frustration, what does that look like? You know, we all, we've all seen that. So if somebody gets frustrated in front of you, you're like, ooh, that guy's getting in a fight with his wife because they're both doing that frustration look. And they're both sitting there like, mm, at dinner? <laughs> you know they're angry at each other and they're having a fucking terrible dinner. But on the range, like you'd see that in an instructor. You can see that frustration. You see them like, <sighs> you know, like just it's it's blatant. We're, we're us as human beings, man, we pick up on that behavior pretty quick because we see it. We do it ourselves. So uh, attitude is a big thing. And, uh, and I think passion, right? Like the passion for what you're doing is, is huge, which we talked about earlier. So, um, but, but those are, those are huge key important things about instructors or teachers. And then, um, and then lastly is like transference of information, right? Like how, how do you transfer that information? If you just tell me how to do something, that's not the same as teaching me how to do something. Right. Although some people would say that's semantics and oh, John, it's the same, same. It's, it's not, bro. It really isn't. Cause like if I told you, all right, hey, make sure you drink that water out of the bottle. How? How, <laughs> how John? Well, first, man. So go ahead and grab it with your left hand, then spin the top counterclockwise with your right hand. All right. Once the top's off, you put that down. You don't need that anymore. You could even go two hands if you want. All right. And then from there, you're going to have to start tilting the bottle, but make sure you put it on your bottom lip. Otherwise, you're going to spill that thing all over yourself, right? And, and you teach them how to do it. You explain it, right? You go in detail. And, and, and that's, that's how, that's the difference between like telling you and, and showing or teaching, right? And I think that's, that's important, right? Like being able to transfer that information to people. And, and now all three of you and whoever's listening is going to be able to use that water bottle really good. Right. So it's about oh, time. Yeah. Just When's the water it, video coming? We're waiting. Yeah, now I'm oh, waiting for the water. It's totally video. coming now. Yeah. yeah I, see, that's, that's at least two of you that want it. So that's worth it. <laughs> that's worth at least 30 minutes my day. <laughs> um, I'm going to be at the airport. I'm going to be like, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Charlotte International. <laughs> We're going to talk about water bottles. Uh, but now, uh, all in all, though, it's it there. There is a huge correlation uh, or, or difference. I'm sorry between the two, telling and teaching, and uh, and some instructors don't know, right? Some are just put into instructor billets. Uh, some decide uh, today I want to be an NRA instructor, and they go out and do it, and they can barely pass the little qualification that's that you can pass with your eyes closed, and um, and then they are instructors, which is a a, a loose word now. Right. Very, very minimal strength comes with that in my eyes. Uh, so so really, realistically, it's I, I hope they could teach. Right. I hope they don't get anybody fucking killed. But realistically speaking, like if, if they can't teach, you can't teach. Right. You got to go learn to teach or you have to practice and practice and practice and practice until you understand how to convey that information in a way that others can receive it. Um, which not a lot of people have that ability. Uh, I saw it while I was in high school and when I went to college, right? We all had good teachers that you were like, yeah, I'm excited. I'm going to Miss Kelly's class. It's going to be fucking awesome. And, uh, and you get in there and you're like, yeah, grammar, vocabulistics. This is awesome. Or you got in there and you were like, all right, well, another day of this bitch. <laughs> so like, it's, it, it, it definitely it definitely has a correlation there where, where some people just can't teach, man. They're there for a paycheck. And uh, in this world, man, there's some, some high consequences to that shit. But some people don't give a shit. That's the other problem. You know, like there's no consequences to them being a bad instructor to them, right? There's only a bad consequence to the instructed that, that get that false or that poor instruction. Um, and and that's, that's another one is, you know, you, you got to give a shit, right? So that's a big one, big one. So you discussed this very briefly. How do you generate interest for your courses? Or what aspects help generate interest? Uh, interest for my courses. 
I think overall, the, the way I've generated interest, or if you want to call it that even, um, has been word of mouth. Um, and, and, and being, and already providing a good service, right. Or a good, um, product. So if, if my product's good, that dude's going to go out and say something to his friends or to his neighbors or to the people that he shoots with or whatever. And then that continues to, to blossom more and more. Um, and everybody had this moment, you know, when they started out where their classes were three strong, and then it grew to like six strong every once in a while. And then you were like, man, I'm, I don't know if I can live off of this. And you, you eventually pass that break even point and, and you start building more and more of that, uh, uh, that following to an extent, if you want to call it that, but mainly that just student base. The other thing is being a student, right? Like every class I've gone to either one guy or two guys have been like, I feel like I know you from somewhere. And I'm like, I don't know, man, probably rogue one. Uh, but, but, <laughs> but mainly it's like, once they recognize you, they're like, they're like, why are you even in a class? It's like to learn, why are you in the class? Like, <laughs> you know, and, and, and that generates a lot of interest. They're like, why, why is John here? If he's an instructor, you know, the, the three years of symposium that I went to as a student, people asked all the time, they're like, what the hell are you doing in this class? I'm like, learning gun things or medical things or just learning things, you know, and, and it, cause like, that's, that's a, an important part of being a teacher is continuing education, right. Professional development. And, um, and so, so, so it, it cracked me up, you know, people didn't expect it. And then once they see you shoot and they see that you're, you're a cool dude, they want to hang out with you more or they, they just realize that you're more knowledgeable than they really expected you to be, or that you're easier to approach than you were on the inter interwebs in that one video they saw of you when you had a cold or some shit, you know, whatever it is. Um, that, 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 that I think built a lot of interest is when, when I see other students in classes that are like, shit, man, I, I want to learn from you too. So that, that was a huge one. And then, you know, all these podcasts and stuff, those always help, you know, see people that, they, they've never met me that they, they don't know who this crazy tropical brown man is, but, uh, but once they meet him or see him talk and they're like, you know what, I kind of jive with his dad jokes, you know, like that water bottle shit, I'm into that, you know, and then they start waiting on my YouTube channel until that water bottle like video comes out and then cool, maybe they'll come to a class, but if they don't cool, man, just make sure you vet your other instructor. But that's, how, that's how I see it. I think that's how I've generated it. Um, also, also just uh, articles I've written. I think that helps too. Um, uh, yeah. Other than that, I have no idea because I don't pay anybody for marketing. <laughs> that, I don't. I don't have that kind of pull, and I don't know. I just. I, I'm not. I'm not as cool as some of those dudes that have like a whole marketing company behind them or whatever. I feel like the answers that we've been getting for that one from a lot of the instructors is multifaceted, which naturally it would be, you know, you're generating interest for your courses and you're trying to reach a large number of people and, you know, therefore it's multifaceted. But I think that that is likely somewhat new that people are going to social media and creating YouTube channels, um, Instagrams and whatnot to create, um, interest for their courses. And like we've heard over and over, word of mouth is so key, but you're getting word of mouth in these much larger pools, like you were saying, um, through social media, you, you reach so many people at once. And then you have all of those people, you know, got that ripple effect, you know? No, absolutely. And it's, it's just the, that that's what social media or how social media uh, that that's their version of word of mouth at this point. Uh, Cause it, it is like sharing. <laughs> and also just generating interest um, by attending other classes and shooting with people is awesome. I mean, for one, it shows them that you're still interested in learning more and you're not just becoming some jaded cranky old man or whatever. But, you know, it's, you know, if, if I rolled up to a class and you were there, I'd be like, 
wow, look at that. And then, you know, I'd chat Don't with you and then, yeah, it, it just generates interest when you have a, a personal experience with somebody in person, you know, even versus just, I've talked to people online who seemed really nice or really cranky. And then I meet them in person and they're the opposite. Yeah. So. That's, that's because some of them have a uh, personality, you know, and they, they do their, their personality things on the interwebs and they do the, the normal things in the persons. And I don't know, Matt can tell you, I'm pretty much the same person each time. <laughs> I, I only have one setting usually. So it's uh Duffy or you on. Get Duffy. Yeah. On. <laughs> so it's, it's, that's usually what you get, but some people don't like it. Apparently I met one guy. He did not like my personality. I was like, all right, cool, man. Well, I guess we won't be friends. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> I Thanks. apologize for nothing. Like take care. <laughs> Have a good day. I think it was cause I didn't like the same music as him. That's exactly why. Different so, CDs. Yeah. CDs. What are those? Um, <laughs> In setting up classes or teaching a class, what issues have you run into that you didn't consider previously? Uh, staplers. I've set up multiple classes and I was like, oh, they'll have staplers. There. <laughs> it's a range. No staplers. <laughs> so quick run to Home Depot or Lowe's or something usually fixes it. But, um, but I started bringing at least one in my box uh, because I ran into that problem. I didn't expect. Um, the other one is uh, most people don't check the weather enough, right? They, they don't hang out outside enough um, and uh, they don't check the weather. So they show up to class and they're in shorts, sneakers and t-shirts or whatever. And you're like, bro, it's going to downpour in like three minutes. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, that's going to be rough. I'm like, yeah, that was a dumb idea. You should probably like, you know, added a jacket to that laundry, you know, that, that, outfit uh but yeah man i mean i i think one of the big ones i think i stayed in like how to be a student the one of the things i always bring to every single class no matter where the hell it is is a rain jacket and gore-tex boots every single time because i don't know when it's going to get rainy and i don't know if the range is going to actually flood enough to where my sockies get wet and my sockies get wet and my feet get soggy i just start thinking about that instead of teaching and i don't want that i don't i don't want to be uh, out of the zone. Uh, so, so being comfy, I think like as, as an instructor, it's important. And then, and then also not being all like pissy pantsy about the weather, uh, helps students also stay in the zone. Cause they're like, man, John, you're, you're a tropical man. And it, it was like 45 and it was raining all day, like drizzling on us the whole fucking day. Like, are you okay? I'm like, no, I'm fucking cold, dude. Like I'm freezing. Luckily I had these hot hands in my pockets. <laughs> like, it worked out. But, uh, but like, I think those, those are a couple of things people like uh, don't think about. And I, I kind of ran into on the range that, that helped me as a student and as a teacher. Um, there's like simple rules like that. Like, I don't care what my bag weighs. I'm still going to work in some Gore-Tex boots and a fucking jacket, right? And like some kind of uh, uh, rain jacket that's going to keep me dry. Uh, because that there's two comfort creature or creature comfort set, you know, that the army didn't allow me, but I ain't in the army no more. So I'm going to do, do what makes Duffy happy. And that's, that's very helpful. What do you see as the biggest challenge you face in most classes? Biggest challenge. I, I, I don't think it's in the class. It's after the class that is my biggest challenge. And that's when I, I go ahead and I, I start dissecting what I taught, right? I start thinking about every little thing that I went through and, and kind of like, because I, I drive home um, or back to the hotel or something in complete silence. And I sit there and I think about what I did and what I, what I applied, what I taught. And I, I go through it because I'm trying to dissect and see if there's any holes in places that I could have filled in and done better um, or ways that I could have said things differently. Um, and I, and I always like, you saw it every single class. I always ask for feedback. You know, like I always, I always ask if you guys had fun, always learn. 
you know, and see if you guys got those two. And then from there, I was for good, bad, and ugly, man. Let me know, like right there on, on, on the fucking range, let me know what I could have done better because one, it's in front of all the students because I ain't trying to hide shit. And if it's a really good advice or really good thing, I was like, oh, I like that. You know, then I can implement that later or I can think on how to implement that later. Or, you know, if it's, if it's something really stupid, then I'll just tell them like, nah, I can't do that. That's dumb. You know, like one guy asked if I could bring enough blue guns for everybody. I was like, no, I'm not bringing 16 blue guns. That's kind of stupid. You know, like if we got to do grip stuff, I'll take your slides off and let you do the slide. You know, I'm sorry, on just a frame, you know, and that's, that's as the equivalent to blue gun that we're going to get to. Um, and he was like, okay, that makes sense. Like, that's a lot of guns to travel with. I'm like, yeah, a lot of rubber ones that TSA is going to want to look at every single time because they're thick plastic and they can't see them on the x-ray properly. So that, that was like, those kind of things come up, but no, I, I dissect things at the end of classes. I think that's the, the, the harshest I am on myself and in the way that I did it and, and hopefully can make it better. Or if it's between day one and day two, what can I do tomorrow to fix the things from today? If there were any or add to tomorrow, um, because maybe I forgot something and uh, things like that. So that that's where that's I think the hardest part of um, my my classes and stuff for me at least are. But as for challenges that when I'm teaching wise or in classes, I, I really don't have a lot of challenges because I really enjoy it. Right. So it, it's it's more I'm having fun with you guys versus like oh shit, this is gonna be hard. All right, guys, hold it with your left hand. You know, turn, turn a character, you know what I mean? So, so it's not much of a challenge per se, but it's like, um, but it, it's, uh, it's afterwards where I, I, I challenge myself to get back. That's, that's where I see it, I guess. For those listening or listening along that don't have videos, Duffy is constantly using this water bottle, reinforcing <laughs> the need for a water video eventually yeah. on his YouTube channel. I mean, it's become, you know, the, one of the main jokes now. So we're going to, we're going to continue using it. I didn't have any cookies. Otherwise I'd teach you guys how to eat cookies. Uh, I ran out. <laughs> that son of a gun. It was uh, the, the sheriff's office here. They had, they had a whole thing of cookies and I ate my fair share today, but did not uh, get away with any. They, they were all crumbs by the end of the day. Okay. So it's whiteboards and cookies that I have to call Mr. Hampton about. Mm-hmm. Mr. Okay. Hampton, in. Hey, you got to write him a letter. Mr. Mr. Hampton, like on in. white chicks. Okay. Oh, yeah. Dear Mr. Hampton, in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a BF. <laughs> you know? I'm going to have a BF. Was, She's going to have a under, BF. underrated movie. Man. Oh, that movie's yeah. fantastic. But yeah, either way, that is, uh, that is I guess, my, my hardest challenge or the biggest challenge I have to face is, is when I'm teaching. I don't even know if I would call that a challenge either, or at least if it is a challenge, or if you see it as a failure, you do a fantastic job of not treating it as just some pathetic failure that you've done. I mean, you still turn it into a positive in the end, because I'm sure that plays a big role in how you change your classes and your teaching over time. Well, it, so. it goes along with the way that I look at look at things, right? Like um, my, my, uh, my view or the, the lenses I look through life with. Um, I don't look at things as, as wins and losses or passing and failing. I look at them as wins or learning or passing or learning, right? Everything, every bad thing has something to teach me, right? So that's the challenge is trying to make myself better after every class, right? That, that's the challenging part is like, how do I make that shit better, man? Every single time, even though, like, like I said, like I dissected all the way down, like everything I did, everything I could remember I did too. That's, that's a hard one. But, uh, but mainly like everything that I did, how do I challenge myself to make that even better? And that's, uh, that, that's probably another thing that sets me apart from other instructors too, is like, I don't just go home and like, you know, do whatever people do after they teach or whatever. But I, I like, I sit there and I like really kind of muster over it and try to figure it out. And, uh, and especially like if I'm at, at dinner with like dudes that I went to, uh, that were in the class, if I go to dinner with them on like Saturday night or something, I'll, I'll be like, Hey guys, you're like, 
anything you thought of like today, like even after like sitting on it for a couple hours, like anything that I could have like changed or like made better, like what, whatever it was, like maybe it was just that, you know, maybe I went too fast on a certain subject or you know, too slow on one or like anything that that's the challenge is trying to make it better every time. Um, but everything, everything can teach me something, right? Like every, everything that people look at as failures, losses, um, whatever negative thing that you want to, you want to try to imagine every single one of them is actually just a learning moment that you haven't discovered yet, right? A, a, a learning situation or a learning something that could teach you. And, uh, and that, that's part of being a student, right? Like, <laughs> like if I go to class and I suck at like, a good example, right? My body position for long range shooting and, and precision shooting was atrocious after the first class I did, right? It was just like bad. Like I just couldn't get comfy. I figured out that it was something to do with my, my stock place or my cheek, cheek riser. And I had to like lower it a little bit to get me more comfy and change my scope position. But it took me a while to figure that out. But what I was doing was trying to dissect it, constantly trying to dissect it because I wasn't good at it. But if I go to a class, I'm not good at something. I jot that bitch down. I'm like, all right, what was bad about it? How did it go? How can I, like, what, what can I try differently that I didn't think of or try at that time? Um, or what are the things I did try that didn't work, right? That way I have a, an idea and some, some uh, references to go by. And then guess what? I go home to practice body position, right? Like I don't practice all the good stuff or the, the stuff I was really good at. Like my bolt manipulation was fucking smooth. Right. Yeah. I'm going to go practice that shit because I was already good at it. No, dude, that's some ego bullshit. Right. I'm going to go home and like you know, beat myself to death with body position because I sucked at it. And even now, like I still try to work on body position because that shit's hard as hell, man. Um, so, so getting behind the gun and stuff like that, uh, I, I like, to, I like to challenge myself with the things I'm bad at. So if I fail at something in some form or fashion, I look at it as like, okay, we're going to learn from it. We're going to challenge ourselves to get better from it, uh, whatever that is. But the dissection of classes is all about challenging myself to get better every, t- every single time. So even if Matt took the class a third time, he would be like, some bitch is different because every single time it gets different because I'm always trying to make it better and better. And it goes along with my, my motto for my company, do better, right? Because we can all fucking do better every day. You know? So like even, even if I shot the best b8 in the world right a 10x right and all of them were on that fucking little tiny x and every single hole was right on there on a b8 one i'd take a picture of that bitch and flaunt it second thing i'd do (laughs) is go ahead and back up further right or challenge myself to do it faster because that obviously was the the, like the, the easiest or slowest way i could do it or whatever it was so now I got to challenge myself with more speed or more distance, or maybe do it upside down, or maybe do it from the side, or maybe do it on the move. Like, fuck me, dude. I'm going to try anything I can, right, to challenge myself to get better each time. Um, so that's the way I look at shooting, too. Like, people are like, oh, what's your draw speed? I'm like, it's whatever it is right this second, because I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't sit there and check it every every day. So. I have no fucking clue. It's it's at whatever speed it is, and whatever that speed is, I could probably make it better if I focus on it and challenge that shit. So that, that's how I see things. Um, good example. I didn't know how to use QuickBooks, right? A couple of years ago, took a class on QuickBooks. All right, challenge myself, learn something new. So, yeah, that that sounds a lot like the kill your clone concept. I don't know if you're gonna kill yeah. yourself using QuickBooks, but you know the. The idea is every single night a clone of you from the prior day comes to kill you. And the idea is if you've learned nothing new, then you're probably going to get killed. No, dude, you put out a sign and you make him join your team. Duh. I know how to use QuickBooks. (laughs) There you go. You start an army. I I, I wasn't talking about QuickBooks, but (laughs) that'd be a lot of good shooters. (laughs) (laughs) That reference just confused Tessa. It was awesome. No, it didn't confuse me. I just envisioned that. And like yesterday's me is that's just terrifying. She knows everything about you. <laughs> every except for what you've done today. Exactly. And that's how you that's how you win the fight. Quick books. <laughs> Quick books. Yeah, so I didn't get any harder to kill today. I I didn't. 
Yeah. She, she needs to get better today. I'm applying it too literally. I like literally envisioned like myself with a machete and it just like, it, it just went off like water. That's the tool you would use. <laughs> I'd well, yesterday, like yesterday. Meters, dude. <laughs> I'd catch me coming out of this hotel and get me from a while back. Right? <laughs> like, Oh, I would not challenge me straightforward. That would be too fair. Mm-mm. I don't play fair though. Man, I'd fuck me up. That'd be a bad idea. So uh, the only question, Matt, why was John not on the failure as a building block modcast now? Because that's all I thought about for the last five minutes as he what was, was explaining he was things. Probably Must busy? have been busy, but he would have been a great too. addition. Yeah. Well, you got to you gotta cut that down and make more time for internet things, clearly. That's... Uh, I'll do my best. I'll do my best. I barely have time to like, you know, sleep. So, but uh, but I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I did fall asleep earlier. Took a little cat nap before this. So if you could go back and do it all over again, what would you do differently, or would you not? Mm, like like my business or like life? Yes. Hmm. Nah, I wouldn't change much. Like, like, I think uh, I like who I am and, and that's not like narcissistic, I guess, or maybe it is a little bit, but I, I don't think, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not upset with myself. I don't hate myself. I, I enjoy what I do. I, um, I'm happy with my life choices so far. Uh, so I don't know. I feel like it was a good call. Like John thought it through as he went through some things he didn't, but that was like my skateboarding years. Um, but other than that, it was, I, I think it was, it was a good call. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with me. If I wasn't, I'd start changing things. So I always try to problem solve and stuff. That's why I, I like, like some people, <laughs> they don't like things fixed. They just like to listen, like you to listen to them. I'm like, yeah, so this is what you should do. It's like, you should like change this about this. Definitely get soda out of your diet drink more water <laughs> like and then and then it's, it's all gonna be okay and they're like i didn't want the the solution i just wanted you know an ear i'm like man i need to buy a rubber ear for that those kind of situations like here man <laughs> i have this rubber ear so but yeah yeah and i'm i'm very happy with with what i've done and uh and i i'm proud of myself you know in certain aspects so i'm i'm very uh appreciative if you would say like, like I've had a good, um, had a good background, had good support through that. Uh, also because of the way that I think and whatever, whatever implemented that shenanigans, like whether it's my mom or, you know, some, some gods of some sort or whatever, like, uh, whatever implemented the way that I think, uh, I think would have solved it if I was doing something incorrect, if that makes sense. Cause then I'd be like, man, that doesn't feel right. You know, or hey, that's morally and ethically incorrect. Let's let's steer ourselves back on track. So those kind of things that I, I find are, are it's just self-correcting errors and stuff like that. But nothing to change really. Here's the best question we have for you. Go for it. What insurance considerations have you had to make? Insurance considerations, not much. Right. Like uh, I had to get something that would cover force on force stuff um, because that was important. Uh, but mostly like when it, when it came to the insurance was, was just finding one that would actually cover me. And right? that was kind of the hardest one. But, uh, but other than that, like I, I haven't had any serious things to use it or any issues with it. Um, it's a little pain in the neck when I have to put more and more um, ranges on it, like constantly because some ranges want you to be, they, they want to be on your insurance and stuff as like a, a covered party or whatever. Um, but other than that, nothing crazy. That's what you meant by it, right? I'm not misinterpreting that. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, other than that, I've, I've been pretty solid. Yeah, so one of those topics that I don't think many instructors that are new to this even consider or even think about. Right. Uh, not just that, but some people don't even get any. And, uh, I, and that's not the smartest choice in life. Uh, once again, self-correcting error at a certain point, but it may be too late at that point. Um, but 
the goal is like, like any insurance that I have, whether it's for my car, my house, my, my, whatever, um, is to never, ever, ever use it. Like that's just a fire extinguisher, man. I want that bitch to expire and I want to buy another one. And I want that thing to just sit there. Just like all my med gear. I want that shit to expire. I want to use it for training and I never, ever want it. And I want to buy more and never have to use it again. You know, like I, that's, that's the way I look at it. So I try to be careful, try to, like you said, like my atmospheres at my classes are completely different from a lot of other ones. Um, and, and because I'm not, because I'm not yelling, that definitely helps a lot of people kind of chill the fuck out. And, and because they're more relaxed, they're not thinking about John's going to yell at me. They're thinking about, okay, what do I got to do here? And it's a lot, it's a lot more uh, safer, in my opinion, when you treat everybody like adults versus treat everybody like kids. Because uh, we all know, like, if you treat me like a kid, I'm going to act like a kid. And I'm put, putting gum in your fucking hair. So, <laughs> yeah. And, and I almost got gum in Steve's beard one time. It was going to be awesome. He moved just in time. Like, I, I spit it at him. It was awesome. It was, it was you can watch it. Like, it was in slow motion. So I, I could see the trace. Right? <laughs> Missed him by, like, I don't know couple inches because he was like Ugh. <laughs> so but either way yeah so, don't, don't treat me like a kid i'll act like a kid. you said you had a hard time finding a um, policy or a company that would cover you so were you looking at just normal business insurance first or is it just because of something in your curriculum that no, most it, it, companies it was mainly cover? for uh people that use uh non-lethal training munitions like okay yeah or sims um some insurances won't cover you for that because they're like hey man you shouldn't be pointing guns at people it's like bro they can't shoot real bullets but they hear all the horror stories and of course like everybody's reactive to those kind of things so it was hard to find one that actually approved of that. And there's a few out there. So uh, you can call up like UTM or some munitions and actually get the ones that approve them or approve the agencies that use them and stuff. So it's not, it's not too hard. Um, the, uh, the other thing is like, you have to deal with those, those kind of corporate entities sometimes uh, like to set that kind of stuff up, but it's worth it in the long run. Like, you know, I, I don't know how much I pay for insurance. It's probably like four or $500 a year, but like that, that's pretty normal in my opinion. That's way less than I pay for like my house. You know, so I'm cool with it. I'll Which make it work. Crazy because when I first started considering it, which was, it was actually one of the first things that I thought of immediately. I was, it was pretty much like, Oh, maybe I'll be an instructor eventually. And then I was like, Hmm, insurance. But my, I was thinking it was, way more money and then i talked to a couple people about it and they were they just said nah it's pretty cheap and i yeah. and I, I was thinking i don't understand how that's possible because they're it's guns and they said yeah but i mean the incident rate is a lot lower than you think it is so it actually yeah. ends up being pretty cheap yeah i pay more for car insurance yeah yeah exactly yeah and i've only totaled like three cars in my life and two of them were military vehicles and those don't count against me <laughs> and those are awesome so you're actually at least i think you are the first person to mention like a rough estimate of what it costs you every year mm -hmm. um and I, I guess i've never heard that before so that's that's really interesting i i genuinely thought it was a lot more expensive no no it's a it's surprisingly not which is good so keep that shit under wraps people don't go like well why is the insurance going like <laughs> <laughs> like let us let us enjoy this one don't atf it to death all right um don't go is this brace okay atf um but yeah so it's it's kind of cool it's it's good but once again like i i i'm happy it doesn't need to be used ever and uh and that's what i'm going for i'm going to continue that that and hopefully it uh continues do you ever shop around with your policies or no, nah. no, nah. Once I once I had it, I locked it in. I was I, I just kept with it. Okay. Um, not not that it's it's not it's not the worst idea, but mm -hmm. it's it's something that you know it's it wasn't overly expensive. It wasn't killing me. It, it went up a lot because it goes up per the amount of uh, ranges you put on it. 
So I think it started out way lower, if I remember correctly, but that was years and years ago. So I don't, I'm not sure. But every year I re up to allow all those same ranges to be on there. So it's, I, I could probably go through it and nick say some of the ones that I don't use anymore, but I haven't yet. And I think it's one of those things like I just haven't gotten to. Uh, I haven't gotten bored enough to have to do that yet. <laughs> but I stay busy enough that I'm like, that that's definitely not on my mind. Like I just thought of it right now while we we're talking about it. And I'm like, man, I haven't done that. So maybe I will. <laughs> but other than that, I, it's, it's all good. And you can do that after the water bottle video. Yeah, maybe, maybe I, I have, uh, I have a lot more products on the way that I'm, I'm developing, uh, for my company. So it's been, uh, it's been a blasty blast and I, I can't wait to like introduce the next one. So that's, that's where my, most of my focus when I'm not teaching is on, uh, is, is creating those new, new little thing with bobbies and widgets for you guys. What is your advice to future instructors? Don't be a piece of shit. Um, so that's, that's the first one. Uh, <laughs> No, I, I think that's a, that's just jot, a sh- jot that down real quick. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But no, seriously, like if, if you're, uh, if you are not happy doing it, right. And you wake up in the morning, you're like, Oh, I gotta go teach bro. Like that is not the right attitude. That's not the person I want to learn from. Right. Personally, that's not the person I want to learn from. Um, I, I want to, I want to go to somebody that enjoys the fuck out of what they do. Um, that's, that's the person you're going to learn a lot from, uh, if, for example, like once again, going back to the farrier, right. If I, I, if I want to learn how to put on horseshoes, I want to find the farrier that like fucking loves it. He sings and he makes music with the shit. Like he's having a good time, you know, like he's enjoying his job and it's his career path and enjoys changing things and making it better, like being innovative once again, like those, those that don't continue to innovate and evolve usually fall off the side of the, the, the rails. And then, uh, and those are the ones that like, like they turn into big pieces of shit. You know, like, bro, like you were cool. Like 10 years ago now, like I can't stand to stand next to you. You smell funny. You don't have a good attitude. You're, you're, you're kind of, a, you're kind of a dick. Like you turn into a big piece of shit. I don't like it. So, uh, so I'm not, I'm not a fan of that kind of stuff. And, and if you did become an instructor, the second you wake up and you're like, man, I gotta go teach this morning. Like, bro, like right there should be a huge indicator for you. Like, all right, maybe it's time not to teach anymore. Maybe it's time to do something else. Maybe it's time to like, you know, pivot and do something that would, would help other teachers. Yeah. Like go, go work on QuickBooks. Like, (laughs) That shit does it by itself. Um, but, but overall, like, I, I think that's one of the biggest things that, that, uh, that a lot of guys don't do is they, they don't change their path because they're just comfortable. And, and the downside to it is that every student that comes to them after that moment is getting a lesser and lesser and lesser version of their product and, and potentially could get somebody once again, fucking killed. So to me, because I look at it through that lens of like, it, it may save their life. It may get them killed. Like I want to make sure that it's not going to get them killed. Right. And I'm going to do the best I can and, uh, and provide that versus the, the other way around where they're like, oh, I'm just going to teach today. Oh, bro. No, 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 no. Um, yeah. I, I actually, I heard it recently too. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm done with the training season. Thank God. For one, I don't know what the fucking training season is. Like, Duffy's always teaching, right? <laughs> like, like, in Christmas Day, I'll teach you something. One, eggnog's awesome. But check it out. If you dip your Oreos in eggnog, it gets even more awesomer. Boom. So, um, but, <laughs> but overall, like, if you, if you look at, like, the, the so-called training season, it, it differs or it, it kind of fluctuates right there at the holidays, but that doesn't mean anything because guess what? You're like, we're just doing holiday things. You're just doing normal life. You know, like you're not, it's not, it's not like the end of the season, you know, and then we start back up in January. It's, it's just like, there's a break, you get a breather 
And if you want to call it that, or you get to work on different things, curriculum, you know, you get to work on, on building relationships. You get to, Hey, fucking send people a fucking Christmas card or some shit, make them feel good about it. You know, all, all sorts of things. Like I send all my alumni, you know, a good old Christmas card and like, Hey man, thanks for fucking coming and hope for you guys fucking enjoy it. And, and fucking happy holidays and, and Merry Christmas. Cause like, that's the right way to do it. Um, and, and Hanukkah stuff, but like overall, like just fucking be a human being. But, uh, but it's, it's that, that kind of attitude, like, Oh, thank God it's over for the year. Like, you know? <laughs> like, bro, nothing's ever over. Not until you're dead. You know, like that's, that's when it's over, <laughs> but yeah. So those kind of things piss me off about instructors. So don't be a piece of shit. It goes back to what you said about attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, you don't know, have to be like fucking, you know, super attitude-y, but you have to have a good one. Okay. This is my favorite question. Uh -oh. What is one thing that you've changed your mind about in the last five years regarding gun training, whatever stuff? Ah, a good one. The way I teach cover. Biggest thing I've changed in, in, in uh, the most, in, in five years or so, uh, because I saw, right, the majority of students doing cover shit on the range, right, the way that we always teach it. And, uh, and I was like, all right, cool. They're doing a good job on the range. Then you drag them into the shoot house and you make them go opposed, right? And they use cover completely different, right? And they start falsifying the way that they're using cover based off of what they did on the range, right? What they practice. And it pissed me off. And I was like, why do they keep doing this? And I had to dissect it. And once I dissected it, I was like, some bitch. I've been teaching that wrong, right? So, so I changed it up and I changed the way that I teach uh, cover on the range or using cover and concealment and also providing more of a basis for them to eventually you know, cause that's the ticket to the show and the show being the shoot house to getting in there. So, uh, so that's, that's one of the biggest things. Um, the other biggest thing that I changed my mind, and this would be more businessy is the way that I, uh, um, decided on doing more like product related stuff. So before I would teach people how to like modify gear to make their shit easier. And then I was like, wait a minute, I could just like, like I have friends, I can have somebody make that for me. <laughs> and then we can make a lot more of them in different colors and then provide those to people. And I can get a different source of income, but also like now they get a finished product versus some chewed up piece of crap that John showed you how to cut up and sew and, uh, and hopefully it works, <laughs> but now it's, it's a professionally sewn or professionally made product that, that comes out and, and helps people once again. So it took a while to get there, right? Like build up capital enough to do it and, and do certain things. But that, that was on the business side of things. I think that was, that was one of the coolest things that I've done um, in the last five years or well, really in the last year. That was a huge change in my mindset because I was like, nah, I don't want to deal with that. And then I kind of smartened up. I was like, well, if I want one of those, I assume others may want one of those. And if I can, if I can provide that, then that, that's kind of cool. So that's a big one. Cool. And I guess if people want to see this whole thing about cover and concealment, they need to go to your class. Hell yeah, girl. I thought about making a video on it, but I feel like there would be too many internet people that go in there. Like, oh, that's terrible. I wouldn't do that. Like, Actually. Bro. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't get the context. You didn't get the context. Exactly. So yeah. That's, that's why when people see that formula on the internet, they're like, what is that? Or, or, or anything that I draw on the internet. Remember where everybody's like, they were, they were trying to like that picture you put up and, and they saw like this wiggly circle and a bunch of scribbles in there. And I was like, what was John trying to draw? Like, <laughs> they were trying to guess in the comments. It was great. It was hilarious, but they were all wrong. <laughs> so it's, it's like, man, you gotta come, man. You gotta get the, get the context, get the crazy brown man, the crazy tropical brown man to tell you. You know, uh, but yeah, so teaching's a funny thing, man. But the the internet gets a little crazy, so I try to keep things off of there uh, when it comes to uh, 
weird shit that they need an explanation for versus the the things that they're gonna they're gonna guesstimate off of and you're like man no you guys are guessing incorrectly and you're, you're making this frustrating for me but it's all good yeah and i i love the fact that you've started to develop some of your own products just it's just cool <laughs> basically i mean sure you could just keep cutting stuff up and I'm sure some people will continue to regardless just because that's how they roll. But yeah. it's just nice to see somebody that sees a deficiency of some sort in equipment that they're using and think, yeah, I could do that better. I mean, you talked about Filster before and that's it's the same thing that they do. You know, they see, exactly. they see an issue with something and they think of a way to do it better basically. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I've heard some people prior to the Enigma or afterwards that we're saying, oh, I just tape a holster to a belt. It's the same thing. No, it's not the same thing. And it works far better. That's okay. That, that, that is the person that won't buy it. Right. So that means they're not yeah. your customer, man. And that's cool. Rock on, go buy a belt, go buy another holster, go do push-ups because you probably need them. So you brought this up a couple times, but didn't get into it. How would you Shucks. recommend people know oh. that too? How would you recommend people vet their instructors? Oh, great one. So I, I get this all the time, actually. I, I need to make a video on it specifically. So the, the way I like to vet instructors, right? So for one, I know a lot of them. So a lot of times I can ask somebody, but that's not what everybody else can do. So what you can do is you, one, read about them right? Read about them on, on the interwebs. Um, I like to look at like 10 or so AARs and, and I mean like in-depth ones, not the one like it was a great class period. Like, no, dude, there, there's, I think there was a little bit more to that. Right. But, but I like to read all of them, right. Anything I could find on forums or on, on Facebook, um, things like that, like where, where I can get some in-depth from somebody else's point of view. Then I actually watch podcasts, right. Big one. Uh, because then you get to see them speak, you get to see their concepts, their thought process, the way they, they kind of uh, depict things, right, once again, uh, how they, they may or may not teach. And then I also go ahead and I read articles if they've written any or if they've done any kind of uh, actual like written stuff, whether it's a blog on their website or something like that, really, really try to like digest what they're, what they're putting out. And, and then from that, I try to go ahead and uh, kind of see if they are my kind of human, right? Cause it kind of, it's like a relationship, man. Like not everybody's going to jive with you. You're not going to jive with everybody. But if, if that person, a great example, right, right here, um, I looked up Kalen Wojcik, right? Now, if you don't know Kalen Wojcik, he's the uh, owner of, uh, well, one of the owners of uh, modern, modern day sniper. He is also the former Magpul core precision rifle instructor. He is a fantastic fucking teacher, fantastic teacher, right? It took a little bit to figure this out, right? Because there's not a lot on him, but he has his own podcast that he talks with his other instructor, Phil Vallejo. And both of them have conversations. They bring people on there and stuff like that. And I just love the way that they talked about certain subjects, the way they, they taught, the way they explained certain things. I was like, man, these are my kind of people. I date them. Right. So then at that point I was like, man, I need to go ahead and, and go take class. So I flew across country, Florida, all the way to Washington. And I was like, all right, let's do this thing. I met them flat out. Like, Hey, you guys don't know me, but I kind of jive with your, your attitude. Right. And, and really like just went ahead, took a class, enjoyed the shit out of it four straight days of shooting at distance at distances. I couldn't shoot in Florida for certain parts of it. And in a terrain, I couldn't shoot in Florida and in the cold where I couldn't shoot in Florida because it's always summer. And, uh, and, and that was one, an experience of its own, but that solidified it where, okay, what I saw, what I kind of read and what I listened to from them was what I got. Right. And, and it was really cool to see that all jive into one. Now I've done the same thing and gotten a different experience before where, Oh, everybody says this instructor's awesome, but it was very anecdotal. And 
I didn't, I didn't see anything bad about them. I went to the class and, uh, and by the time I got to the class, I was like, maybe it was, I think like four hours into it. I was like, wow, this was a big ass waste of time. And not, not because the person was bad or, or whatever, but because their attitude wasn't the kind of people that jive with me. Right. Like I, I didn't like, for one, the instructor said you couldn't talk. <laughs> How am I supposed to ask questions? Oh, you can talk to ask, ask questions. Wait, what? So <laughs> I can, but I can't, I don't know. Uh, so it was, it was really awkward and it, it, it was definitely a militarized civilian course, right? Like the guy came straight out of the military, didn't learn how to teach civilians. He just keeps teaching military style. And that's cool, right? Some people love that shit. Some people like getting yelled at and stuff. Not really, not, not my thing. I, that's why I left the military. I'm not, I don't learn that way. Most people, I would say 90% of people probably don't learn by getting yelled at to do something, right? <laughs> like, there's a couple, I'm sure. <laughs> They're probably Marines, <laughs> Marines. Um, but, but overall, like, I don't think a lot of people learn that way. And, and there's studies that show that people learn in environments that are conducive for learning, which are usually calm, relaxed. People are on a, on a lower level of, you know, endorphins to an extent, uh, dopamine is high because you're learning, right? And you're experiencing new stuff, things like that, where, where you can involve those things. Well, when, uh, when I was in that class, it, I, I quickly realized, okay, cool. Like, I'm just going to listen. Uh, I'll try and get what I can out of it. But his teaching style was not the style that I receive information from. Um, and, and it wasn't just me talking to the other students in class. So it, it really was like kind of a, a downer for me and uh, not a waste of money because the experience was still fun. And I still got to shoot and have, have a good time with like other dudes. Uh, but being told not to talk, you know, getting yelled at to shut up, you know, things like that. Like those, those kind of things make me want to punch people in the face. And like, I don't want to punch another dude if I don't have to, but that's that feeling. And I don't like that feeling. Um, so I try to keep that monster contained a little bit. But, uh, but overall, that, that was one of those things that like, no, all right, cool. Like, uh, he's not going to see my face again, not in one of his classes at least. But, uh, but I should have vetted him better, right? And, and I thought because everybody said it was awesome class, everything was cool, he's a great instructor. So there are times that those, those things are going to be very biased, whether the guy was just like his buddy or they like that style of learning. Um, but I definitely should have done a little bit more to understand who it was. Uh, or who, who, or what type of teacher they were. But that's what I suggest is, is take a look at the podcast, take a look at the, the way they type or I'm sorry, type the way they write, the way they, they explain themselves, the way they, they depict information, the way they teach in, in, in essence, so that you can, you can one mesh with that and adapt to it. Or, or if it meshes with you and that's the way that you learn, go for it. Right. You, you, and, and it may, may surprise you. They may be awesome. Uh, so that, that's, that's the biggest one for me is, is their teaching style. Is that going to jive with my learning style? So that's how, that's how I go about betting. And podcasts like this, like talking about shit like this. I think these are one of the best things that the instructors can do. Uh, interviews are good, right? Cause interviewers are just asking random questions most of the time or, or scripted questions that are, um, that are helpful for students to get information from those instructors. Um, and, and open mic kind of things or those lives that are on like Facebook or Instagram live. Those are good too, to kind of get, get a chance to chit chat with them, ask them things. Also email them. <laughs> like you got a question like, Hey man, why, why is your class better than somebody else's? Because math, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like you got to go through that one a little bit, but that's, that's one of those things I think uh, a lot of people miss out on. They don't, they don't, ask questions. They don't, they don't go do the research. Uh, they just follow the Instagram crowd or something and, and do that shit, which sometimes could steer you in the right way, but also could steer you in the wrong way. So kind of putting yourself in the mindset of, um, I wouldn't even say like a beginner, but you know, somebody who might only have access to a local instructor, they don't have the ability to travel. Um, and I think you kind of already answered, but I just wanted to clarify um, you know, that maybe they can't do podcasts or they can't find those things. That person's not active on social media. 
Um, but maybe emailing them. Are there any like key questions beyond why is your class better than X, Y, Z? Um, a couple, a couple of them could be like, Hey, um, in, in what way do you like to teach or in, in what way do you explain certain subjects, you know, things like that, that could, that they, they can start helping you understand the way that they're doing things. Another one is to, um, you know, if, it, if they're a local instructor, usually they're, um, not a high price. It's not a lot of entry into something like that. So you could take one of their one day or one of their intro level courses that are going to be very, um, uh, introductory or, or short, right? Like I know, um, I, I run clinics, like I started doing moving and shooting clinics. And I also started doing, I mean, I do uh, night vision drills nights and you don't have to be an alumni or, or a former student in any way to come do those. Uh, what I ask is that you have some shooting ability because you're going to be shooting on the move or shooting under goggles and this shit's not easy. So, so we're trying to drill it and, and learn from it, but you can see their teaching styles from things like that. Um, that's one thing I did with a local instructor by me years and years ago when I was on leave from the military and, and I was hungry for learning. Um, I met this guy, uh, or I saw this guy's uh, information on the interwebs and, uh, and went to one of his like drills nights. And immediately I saw like he was a, a big fat douchebag. So I was like, all right, cool, man. Well, I'm going to shoot tonight because I paid for it already. But yeah, I'm not coming back. All right. So, so little things like that, little events that they may put on. Um, if they don't have social media, a lot of times that's a, that's kind of a clue as well. And, and, and it could be a good one if you're kind of like that. But most of the time that means they're kind of living in the past still which means that their techniques and things they may be teaching are in the past. And that's not hundred percent. Obviously that's me speculating. Um, but that that's me kind of using those, those context clues per se, or lack of context. Clues. <laughs> um, but, uh, but not to say that everybody needs it, but it is, it is something to, to be a parent or, or aware of at least. Similarly. What are you looking for specifically in an instructor? Now, you said the, the learning, if, if they're teaching the way you like to, to learn, yeah. what else? Or is there anything else? So, so the other thing is that they're good at what they do, right? Like, like it, it, it's, it's kind of important to me. Like I, I try to be a, a phenomenal shooter so that when students come, one, they have to compete against me for a mocha bear patch. <laughs> which people, people try hard. I've only given out five in what, six years, seven years. So, so, so I, they try hard, man. And I've had a few people come multiple times just for those. Um, but, uh, but the other thing, like being, being a phenomenal shooter shows that they have put time into their craft, right? They, they, they care about what they do to be that good to do it. Um, and that, that's something, once again, going back to Kalen Wojcik and, and can't say enough, he's, He's a master at his craft and he's still trying to get better, right? Like when, when uh, I, I actually did a little interview with him as well, like uh, on, on my YouTube channel, if you want to know more about him and Phil, but like he reminded me of Frank Proctor, but precision shooting Frank Proctor, right? Like from the West. <laughs> and I, I thought that was really cool. Like he, he, uh, he had the same attitude, the same kind of thought process, the same in-depth um, uh, mindset that he goes into and, and he looks at things in a more, uh, specific way versus just overall dogmatic shenanigans that people are taught in the military or whatever. He, I think he's even said it a few times in, in the class or in, in multiple classes that I've been to now, but he didn't learn how to do everything he does now in the military. Like no way. Same here. Like there's no way I learned everything I know now in the military. I've progressed, right? I've continued to grow as a person, as a shooter, as a human being, you know, and, uh, and that, that was huge, right? Like, because if you stay on your military laurels, it's not wrong, right? Those are experiences that shit girl, high five, right? Those are great experiences, great learning things, but things, things change over time, right? That's, that's why we don't, fucking use rotary phones, right? We, we've got these cool little computers that we keep in our pockets now. And, uh, 
and that just shows also like like you can't sit back and be you know kind of in 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 this world with a rotary phone at this time right? You're going to be disconnected. You're going to be off the grid, right? You're going to, you're going to not be in, in the now, if that makes sense or in no, because you're, you're too far back. So you have to progress, you have to evolve, you have to grow with the world uh, in, in certain ways. And that's, that's one that I see. And if I see that in an instructor, they're, they're continuing, right? They're growing, they're being, they're being students for real. Um, and that, that right there is like a huge, huge, huge for me. I'm like, all right, man, that guy's going to be worth my fucking time because money, I can make more money, right? Like all of us can go and, and, and find more money. I can flip a sign on the corner and make a little bit more money, right? And then, I don't know how, I'll probably hit myself in the face, but I'll figure those things out, right? And uh, so, <laughs> flippity flip. Uh, but but if, um, if, if I spend the time with somebody, right? Four days out of my life or six days, two days traveling and four days with somebody with my life, that's a lot of time that I could have been doing something different. Right. And, and, and that's a lot of time I'm never going to get back. So it's one that I, I take pretty seriously, but I also want to spend wisely. So, and, and that's, that's how I see it. Like if the person's willing to put that time in for themselves and to progress as a shooter and become better every day, then that guy's probably worth teaching me how to do the thingy I'm trying to learn. Right. So, so that, that's how I see it. And some guys are awesome, right. Awesome shooters once again, but they may not be able to translate that info. So that's where those podcasts, things like that come into play, helping, helping you out. Um, but yeah, th- those kind of things. That's, that's kind of what I'm looking for as, as, as a student looking at instructors. All right, that may be a little crazy. Not at all. No. So we've talked a lot about, kind of like uh, people's mindsets or the the theories behind the way they do things. Are there any specific skills or qualifications an instructor should have? Mm. Or is that too close to what we've already discussed in your opinion? Because I see there's there's a very, yeah, that's, this is one of the questions that I'm really close to just saying, yeah, let's kill that one. Well, what I'm curious about with this one is actually certifications because everybody has a different answer to that question. Okay. So, and, I, so, and I like seeing all the different opinions on that because they really vary pretty greatly from person to person. Yeah. So, I mean, certifications is going to be kind of a personal thing, but um, just like anything else, right? Check out your high school degree. When was the last time you did one of those things? But they certified you in it, right? <laughs> like, oh, good job, bro. Even my bachelor's, right? In business. Like, I use some of the stuff, but if you asked me to do some calculus some business calculus, I'd be like, <laughs> man, a <hey>, Siri, <laughs> you know, like there, I'm not going to be able to do it, but I got a degree saying that I could do it. So certifications have a shelf life in my opinion, right? It's like, cool. You got certified in this thing. That means, you know, you knew, or you did at that time implement those things and were able to accomplish those goals at, at the time to set yourself up for that certificate. Right. But that's all I did was in that time frame give you that certification. Shit changes. Right. So a, a great example, the EMT program, right? Your your uh, emergency medical technicians out there, they have to recertify every two years with the national registry. I, I believe it's still every two years. And the reason why is because shit fucking changes. But if, if you got your EMT fucking 20 years ago <laughs> and you're working as an EMT, but never got recertified in 20 years, imagine what changed in that time. Like, bro, don't touch me. Like if you're going to try and bleed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get away from me. <laughs> like, <laughs> No. Uh, so, so things like that, like I I'm, I'm, and, and that's, oh, but that's the medical field, John. doesn't fucking matter. doesn't matter. Like lawyers, they got to research with certain things, right? They got to know the new laws. They got to know what's going on. Doctors for sure, right? That's another medical field one though. You know, it's anybody, anybody like look at cops even, right? A little bit of training that they get, they still got to recertify on a bunch of shit. Less lethal, fucking baton bullshit, right? They got to they gotta do this driving shenanigans. Sometimes they get to shoot very rarely and it's fucking terrible qual 
and, and I say terrible, not hard. Cause I can do that shit real easy. I thought about doing one with no vision, like blindfolded. All right, dude, am I on target? <laughs> but, but either way. Um, but I, 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 there, there's so many research that are out there because people have to recertify, but why don't, you know, like, Hey, my certification from the army for driving a fucking MRAP in 2009 is absolutely useless right now. Not because I'll never drive an MRAP. It's because I haven't been in one and I don't remember how to drive an MRAP. I don't even know how to turn that bitch on right now. I don't fucking remember because <laughs> I don't do it. Now, like that, that's where I see certifications and stuff. Not that they're wrong or they're bad, but they were good for that time period and they have a shelf life. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I actually just got a certification for work a couple of days ago and it has to get... Um, renewed every year but the way that they do it is you basically have to do credits throughout the year to maintain the certification so okay. you never take a recertification test but if you don't meet the required amount of credits basically you lose the cert so have you kind of a side question to that have you ever had ranges that ask you oh do you have this or that cert because if you don't i mean we we require this or that cert if you want oh, yeah. to teach here etc so, so I keep an NRA pistol instructor certification mm -hmm. up to date, which yeah. once again, every two years, but all you got to do is go on there and pay them. There's no like, all right, so we're going to need you to recall with an NRA RSO, or you're going to have to go and, and make sure you still can fucking teach. I don't give a shit about any of that. They just want your money. And when they, they money, please. And you give it to them. They're like, okay, recertified, you know, like, bro. Like it's bullshit. That's why it's a joke. That's why every time I see the NRA instructor on somebody's fucking bio, I'm like, I hope that's not serious. Like, I hope they don't come with a red shirt and it says instructor on the back. Like I keep it because certain ranges absolutely ask you to have some kind of instructor cert. And I'm sure that's insurance related or liability related in some form or fashion, which is totally fine. Um, but I know that I'm, I, I would say that I'm above an NRA instructor in my ability to teach. I'm just, 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 just throwing it out there. Um, and I don't need that shit, but I still get it every year or every two years, whenever they force me to do the thing, the jiggy uh, and give them what, what is it? A hundred bucks or something. I, I can't remember either way. It's, it's, it's kind of wasted money, but once again, you got to do, you got to do the shenanigans sometimes with these, these hoops. Is there anything pertinent, pertinent that you feel that we should have covered? Uh, I think one other thing, I think your uh, when you're looking for instructors, one other thing you should look for, or at least when you're in a class, is that the instructor enjoys shooting, right? Or, or enjoys medical training or enjoys like whatever you're trying to learn, whittling wood, you know, opening water bottles, um, whatever, whatever it is that they're trying to teach you, they should enjoy that shit. <laughs> like, I don't know, man, I, I had a, I forgot who it was. It was a couple classes ago, but I had I had a couple students come up and they were like, "Man, I've never been to a class where somebody, some like the the instructor or teacher, enjoyed shooting as much as you did." And like, I bring like five or six hundred rounds to teach for two days, and although that may be like half or so of what students bring, that's because I like shooting. I usually don't leave with ammo. <laughs> like, it makes my bags a little lighter. But, um, but what it, what it does is like it, one, it reinforces that I can do what I'm teaching Two, I fucking enjoy it. So like, why wouldn't I want to shoot? Um, so, so seeing that for students, I think is, is huge. And a lot of them that don't see that they don't see the instructor shoot a lot or get on the line and, and do the drills multiple times with them. And, you know, I, I find it to be fun. Um, it's also good reps for me as a, as a shooter, but it, it also just builds that little camaraderie that we have. You know, that fun time that we're enjoying, our time that we're learning. 
Um, once again, adding more dopamine into the actual situation. And uh, I, I think that helps students kind of relax a little bit too. And the other thing too, is like, <laughs> I show them my misses, right? And I do 10 burpees for those bitches, not on the range. I do them on my own in my private area because yeah, they suck. Um, but I do 10 burpees per miss that I have on the targets when I'm like teaching things mainly because one, that's how I punish myself for missing, right. And get better. Right. And so I can get stronger. Maybe I can get better too. Um, but, but also like, um, I like to teach off of mistakes, right? Like if, if I made a mistake, it's like, all right, guys, check it out. Right. I fucked up. <laughs> I'm saying that. Right? Yeah. It's a teaching moment. Um, and the same when somebody else makes a huge egregious, like, crazy fucking shit it's like can i teach off of that i can teach off of that come on in here right and breathing guys and uh and it's cool like it's 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 individual to those courses or those specific classes because like they don't happen all the time and it's not always a teaching moment that, those ways but whenever there are any that i can pick out i always try to do so and i think that's one of the most important things too is like you you're getting more out of what you're doing when the instructor's shooting with you and he can show you why he did certain things or made a boo-boo, but not with an excuse, but with logic and understanding of the, the fundamentals that you guys are learning, right? So, so it, once again, reinforces the things that you're already learning. And now in the context of that situation that just happened, which is kind of cool, especially when you're demoing and they all saw it happen. That's even better. So it, it's cool, man. I, I, I really enjoy it. And I'm not a freak of nature shooter. You know, I'm not Bob Vogel. Um, Bogle, you're a freak, man. Fucking, uh, but, but, uh, um, because I'm not, I make mistakes, right? I shoot, I, I loosen up my grip and I <laughs> trash around every once in a while. Uh, so it's, it's cool to learn off those things and, and teach off those things personally. So that, that's, that's something, but you only get that if the instructor is shooting, right? And enjoying the fact that he's shooting. Because otherwise he's going to be like, ah, oh, that little guy, don't worry about that little guy. No, no, fuck that. Let's worry about that little guy. Let's talk about that little guy. Because uh, that little guy is, you know, somebody's fucking grandma, maybe. Or, strawberry. Yeah, it's a strawberry that flew out of the fucking sky. Oh, he's drinking. No, <laughs> but yeah, man, it's, it's, uh, I think that's an important one that I think people don't, don't pay attention to either. Well, the culmination stage or stages at the end mm -hmm. of your class you are right there. You are bouncing around, excited to participate. But then also Wait for my turn. Yeah. And then you show, OK, this is why I did it. This is why I did it this way. This is how I should be doing it. This is where mm -hmm. I messed up. Yeah. You, you're living what you're preaching. Yeah. Why wouldn't we want to? This shit's fun, man. Shooting's a blast. Literally. Well, it's fun. And then also there's people that learn like a lot from just watching like some that yes. some people that is their um what's the word i'm looking for you know adult learning um yep. that's their, their their training modality wow that's a big word yeah <laughs> that's their thing i don't know how to spell it but i can say it and i know the definition <laughs> but yeah no absolutely and 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 that's that's those visual learners right and uh, i i think it's important man and those those culmination ones that, that Matt's talking about are my extended drills at the end of classes are, are a blasty blast, right? Some pressure's put on you. You're doing it in front of everybody, but you're also applying every single thing we learn for the one or two days of, of, of class. Once again, showing you, okay, shit, man, when all the marbles were on the table, I failed at these kind of things, jot them bitches down. That's why I got practice. Right. And, and the overloading of people's, um, their processors, right? Like if I overload your operating memory in your brain, well, shit, girl, you're, you're only going to be able to focus on so much. But if I get that much overloaded by adding a few extra things into the game and you lost track of how to pull the trigger properly, that means that trigger press is not subconsciously competent enough to be involved in that much operating shenanigans because it has to be a conscious effort. So it just, once again, shows you more shit you got to practice and you got to self-diagnose that shit through your eyeballs in your sights on that target. So yeah, I think it's cool shit. Like it's fucking magic, but it's not <laughs> at the same time. Damn Harry Potter. Any, I, I, always, I, I always try to bring people to Narnia of shooting. 
So any alibi questions from Tessa or Evan? Yeah, I have one that's, well, it's a long-winded comment slash question, really. So last week, we talked to Craig Douglas, who talked about in his classes, he, um, at least for the pressure testing aspect, or when they're actually uh, fighting, he really pressure tests his students, where he makes them nervous in a way, because that's how it is, you know what I mean? And I don't think he keeps that same attitude when he's teaching people, obviously. No, but no, no, he keeps the same exact attitude. <laughs> he's just super chill, super cool guy. Yeah. So, I've been to three of his classes. Yeah, he's he's a pleasure to talk to, that's for sure. It, just wait until the day where he grabs your arm. It's the best. <laughs> You're like, how is this small man so strong? Very strong. But one of the things that you have touched on multiple times and a couple other instructors have kind of sprinkled it in here and there is keeping the warm environment when you teach or the friendly environment so that people can learn better, which I think is huge because I have certainly gone to classes before where I was nervous. In fact, I was I was just at a class somewhat recently with an instructor that I was excited slash nervous about. And we were going over handgun grip and he was kind of just going through the line, fixing everybody's grip. And he was, okay, loosen up. I'm going to adjust your hand and whatnot. And he got to me and I was basically just white knuckling the gun. And he was like, all right, we're going to fix your grip. And I was like, okay. And then he was like, let go of the gun. <laughs> I mean, he had to tell me like three times to let go of the gun. You, you should have whispered at him. been like, you let go of the gun. Yeah, exactly. Wait, what? You, let, you <laughs> let go of it. But... <clears throat> Anyway, so getting your students to loosen up is obviously very important because it, it does help them learn. And also, I'm sure have I'm sure you've heard from students before. Oh, I don't normally shoot this badly. I'm just nervous, blah, 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 blah. So every once in a while. Yeah, once in a while. I usually tell them so, no, no. This is how you shoot. <laughs> no, you definitely shoot this badly all the time, a hundred percent. Most um of when you when you started teaching, did you have the same attitude? Would you say that you were just as friendly when you started? Did you find, or if you didn't, um, as that kind of progressed, that environment, did you find that your students had an easier time relaxing in class and learning more? Or did you really just have the same so, attitude from the start? Well, from, from the start, I've pretty much had the same attitude because that's just my okay. personality. Right. Um, and, and from the military, that's where, where I, I started branching that because I wanted to, I wanted to give the, the new privates, not the experience some guys get, which is fucking do it, fucking do it. You know, you're fucking beating it in the head and, and, uh, and if you do it wrong, you're running fucking 400 meters, go get me a stick, run 400 meters back, bring me the stick. And then it's like, oh. I don't like this stick. Get me another, you know, like, uh, like I didn't want to give them that experience. I, that's, you know, it's, it's borderline hazing. Um, but what, what I wanted them to do is learn. And, and like I said, I looked at the science to learning and it was when people are more relaxed and they're calm and they're enjoying themselves, they learn way more. Um, so I, I've never heard somebody like not learn while they're on a jet ski. Cause that shit's fun. Like you're going to learn a lot because you're having a good time, right? Like, um, and, and so, so if, if you can put jet ski style environment into whatever you teach, right. Or that attitude, you can get a lot of people like really, really honing in on what you're trying to give them. And then not only that, but it's not just like getting the information, but it's retainment of the information because your brain is not focused on other shit. It's not like, Oh my God, this guy's so rude. Oh my God this guy's so mean. Oh my God. You know, they're, they're, they're just, they're in the zone. They're, they're there. Right. And that's the only way you're going to pick up on information is if you're there, right? Like you can't, you can't receive it if you're not. So um, I talk about it in, in an article I wrote called uh, shooters maturity, right? Shooter maturity is like the concept behind you being mature enough in, in a certain aspect. Like it could be any sport. I just put it into shooting, but you being mature enough to receive the information, and, uh, and people have different things, right? Like people have things going on in their lives and uh, some people are running businesses and all that shit's in your head, right? And, and you're in this class and it's, you're not receiving information because you're already, you know, you're somewhere else at the moment. You're not in the now. 
you're not there at the moment and, and mentally. So if, if you're not, then you're not going to get the info. And then you're going to either ask a question later, that's the same thing I just said, or you're not going to ask a question. But if I can captivate you enough and pull you in and keep you, right, keep your attention the entire time and, and, and throw out random ass fucking funnies so that you giggle a little bit, you're like, that's some bitch, that was good, you know, like, or man, that was such a fucking dad joke. And I'm laughing because I laugh at all my jokes. Like, that's why I said them. I think they're funny. Uh, but but if uh, if they're interested in it and they're captivated by it or they're captivated by what we're learning, they're going to receive all that information. Then the retainment of it, because their brain is free of other bullshit, is going to help them retain that to the best of their ability. And then if they're taking notes on top of it, you're, you're compounding the ability to retain the information. So um, I, I equate it to also like one, one of my classes I took in, in the, uh, in college was like, uh, there was, I forget what, it, I think it was my marketing class, I believe it was, but the guy that sat next to me, he was just like, he, he was a cool dude, but he, he obviously like, wasn't there like mentally, he was always on his phone or just like in la la land fucking hanging out. And I was like, man, this guy's like not getting any of this. And he'd always fucking ask me, I'm like, dude, stop asking me questions. And he was like, wow, you're kind of a dick. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> cool. <laughs> you don't like me. That's awesome. All right, 18 year old. Um, but, uh, but after that, I was like, all right, cool, man. He's, you know, one day um, we had a test or something or an exam of some sort. And he was like, he was like, Hey man, what do you, what do you think you're going to get on this? I'm like a fucking a, like I studied, like that's, that's the process to getting what I need. <laughs> He's like, Oh man, I hope I get an A. I'm like, Oh, you studied it, I guess. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> all right. Good job, man. You did the process to not getting an A. <laughs> like, and he didn't get an A, but, uh, but those kind of things, right? Like you, you see that, that kind of student as well every once in a while, but they expect the, the best grade, but they're not willing to put in the time and, and that kind of shit. But either way. It's a, it's an important part of it, I, I believe is like, uh, like putting that, that environment into the, into the fold so that people can learn, they can, they can retain that info. And, um, the other thing that I wanted to touch on quickly was you mentioned notes a lot, which is great, but I think you also said at one point that you actively encourage people to take notes when they're in the class. So you, you made a comment before saying something about, Hey, let's go get some notebooks for you guys or something like that. Every instructor that we have on here always stresses the importance of notes. I have never been to a class before where the instructor said anything about taking notes. And most of the people that I see in classes don't take notes. And I think there's kind of this weird mentality of oh you're a nerd if you're taking notes even though everybody encourages it i never hear about it in class so it's refreshing to to talk to somebody who actively encourages it in the class you know if you're telling your students during the class you know if you want to take notes or if you're taking notes write this down or just telling them hey make sure you're taking notes if you want to that's amazing i mean i've been to classes before where you're just shooting so much that it's like, do I bring the notebook up to the line with me? Where am I putting my notebook if I'm shooting? You know, so that's your your new handy dandy dump pouch that you bought off my website. <laughs> <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, like it, it's an important part of it, right? The, the retainment of information. Um, like dude, every every single class I've been to, um, whether it was in college or it was in you know, shooting or it was medical or it was accounting, or if I was learning to fucking anything, I'm going to take notes. Uh, shit, dude. I took notes on my class today. Like <laughs> I was doing. Um, but I think that's, that's huge. It's important. How, how the fuck else am I supposed to reference all the things I got taught or that I was listening to or anything like that? The problem comes where a lot of guys don't want to do notes because they think that they're going to miss out on the information that's being given, right? So, so there's a fine line on how to balance that. And, uh, and I did in, in my How to Be a Student uh, series, I actually show how I lay out notes. And you can actually make yourself a bunch of templates before class. And that way, like before class, you look at the outline that every instructor puts on their website or should, right? And, and it's usually pretty general, like just the, the titles to the topics, 
you write those down and then you leave a page and you give yourself room for like certain drawings, give yourself room for some bullet points at the bottom, give yourself for like, Hey, a bunch of shit I got to work on. Right. And, and don't bring like a, a right in the rain fucking notebook like that. Like bring, bring a notebook, right. Bring a big ass pad of paper. Cause you never know how much you're going to use. And if you're like me, you draw a bunch of shit and then sometimes you fuck it up. So you're like, and then you got to draw it underneath, you know? So um, I, I think it's fucking important. Uh, I think it's, it, it is a huge part of your investment and your time in a class is, uh, is taking the notes so that you have something to work on later or reference later. Now, I, I always offer that my students can always like, hey, contact me, man, or ask on the Facebook page or on our alumni Facebook page. You know, ask if you forgot or whatever. And if, if I can or if I remember or if they're asking a question that warrants like a video or something, I'll make a video about it and put it on the alumni page just for them you know, just for, for the, the alumni in general. Um, and I, I think that's one of the, one of, one of the good parts about being an alumni to an instructor that's active and that wants to teach more and, and like super hungry to teach all the time. Uh, then they're going to, they're going to give you that. They're going to, they're going to offer different ways of supplementing the class that you just took. And, and I think that's important. Now, some people always ask for like, Oh, I wish this was like video form. I'm like, dude, like, I'm not going to give you a video of my class. Like that doesn't make sense to me. Like, why would I make it a video and then do it in person? Um, but it like, some people just don't retain information. Right. So they need to like record it. They need to write it down. Uh, but you just got to figure out what note taking process works the best for you. And you should have kind of figured that out in high school. And if you went to college for a little bit, at least <laughs> most people don't. Um, but I will say typing it on your phone is probably the worst idea because people get distracted. Oh, notification. Oh, what's this? What's this? And next thing you know, you're 15 slides down fucking Instagram. And you're like, oh, I'm in a class. <laughs> like, then I even forget. And, uh, and, and that's, that's a huge distraction for all of us. That's why I don't take notes on my phone. Um, unless it's like a quick one, like, Hey, you just told me a movie I should check out. You know, I'll take a note on that or whatever, but if it's in a class, dude, I'm using pen and paper and every year I get a new notepad, even though I may not filled up the whole notepad. Um, and, and because I take so many classes, sometimes I'm going through a second notepad or notebook, um, but they're not expensive. Pens aren't expensive. The class in your, is, is probably expensive for most classes and your time is even more expensive. So like, if you value that shit, you should probably take notes. That's how I see it. Yeah. I mean, it's totally Tesha's agree. been taking notes this entire fucking podcast. I see her, true. Her, her fancy pen on her iPad. Yeah, it's true. It's not a phone. I, I don't get notifications. <laughs> no, no I, I just figured she was drawing funny pictures. <laughs> so two questions yeah. last, left. Oh, go ahead. No, I was going to say Steve yelled at me because he thought I wasn't taking notes. And then I said I was typing them on my computer. And then he yelled at me for typing them on my computer <laughs> instead of writing them down. Well, so what you will learn about Steve, he will not be happy. Not unless... He was happy in person. He was really nice in person. Maybe he was just a little drunk he's, during he's always class nice, or something. He's going to be angry at the same but, time. Yeah. He, was, he was surprisingly nice in person. Well, oh. nice and happy are different. And Evan, I well, just he realized wasn't, he wasn't particularly cheery, but he wasn't <laughs> unkind. Let's put it you, that way. You get to see so a lot more trick. Steve now. You gotta, you gotta tickle him as much yeah. as possible. Oh boy. He loves that. No, I'm just kidding. Just don't jump on his back. He's getting a little old. So I used to jump on his back at Shot Show and and like scream, like, there's a bear on a Yeti. <laughs> and it was funny because he couldn't reach me because he's not he's not flexible enough. <laughs> and then uh and then one day i was like man i shouldn't jump on him this year like i think i'm gonna hurt him so i yeah i'm 180 pounds but i think i think that on top of what what you know is, is aging back and stuff, i'm probably not not the best idea so maybe that's why he looked like a hunchback when i saw him it's i just tickle him man i just tickle him now he loves it so who the fuck's doing that <laughs> See, Evan now gets to see all the behind-the-scenes chats. Oh, boy. Oh, that's weird. That are nonstop. 
with, Good luck. with the whole primary and secondary deal. Might, might have been muted. So every once in a while, somebody like says something with my name on it and I'll look and I'm like, what are they talking about? <laughs> oh, I have them all muted. I'm or else my battery would time be dead. Time now. Yeah, I, I couldn't have them not muted. Mm-mm. No, that would kill my battery right uh, within minutes. Um, mm-hmm. Question 18. Will your instruction get someone killed on the streets? Totally fucking possible, right? Like, because anything can get you killed. Driving can get you killed, right? Um, but I do my darndest, like I was saying earlier, to give them the best chance to not die, right? Like, like everything I teach, I want it to be, uh, to, to hopefully be on the side of save their life, save someone else's life. But it also means that they need to put in the time because two days of shooting with me does not make you a fucking ninja, right? I'm not even a ninja. I may look like one when I put on my COVID mask at the airport, right? But I'm definitely not one. So I highly recommend still going out, getting some learning or or getting some practice in and, and working on that. By the way, my battery to my computer is dying and I don't have my cord. So it's, it's getting close. Where can people find you in person, like in classes and online? So uh, you can find me, I mean, obviously in classes, but my classes are on kinetic-consulting.net. And that's where, that's where you find literally everything. Um, it links to all my social media, it links to my blog, where I write different things. It links to all the articles I've ever written. Um, it also links to all my classes. Like there's a list of them and you could just click the one you like and it'll take you right to the class. Um, I try to make it easy because that's how I would want to do it as a student. Once again, uh, I learned from my experiences, uh, but that's, that's pretty much where you can get everything you need about me, whether it's my business Instagram or my, my own personal one, which I kind of use for business too. So it doesn't matter. YouTube. Yeah. And my YouTube's on there too. You can link right to it. There's little, little icons. And where people can buy stuff, your products are also on the, on the website. Yep. All are on the website. And, uh, and you can see my new dump pouch that just came out this, this week, which is freaking cool. Oh, I'm sorry. Friday. So last week, but it's, it's, uh, it's been awesome. It's been freaking busy, but cool. Well, that was a great discussion. Thanks for your time. Absolutely. bud. Thank you, John. That was great. Yeah. Great. I'm glad you guys enjoyed uh, a little bit of my autism in, involved in there. The dad jokes. Yeah. I'm, working work on well. still. Yeah, I'm trying to get them to flow off the tongue a little easier. You're getting there. Yeah. yeah let's, let's just take a little practice. So just closing thoughts, looking at your schedule yet again in 2023, I need you to do weaponized geometry as close to Pennsylvania as you can. I would take the one. Uh, Actually, I may. I'll have to work. I'll have to see about that, actually. Email me, man. It's it's easy. I'm easy to host. Ask Matt. I was like, yeah, you got a whiteboard. You got range. Okay.